in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed so knowledge talks about the acquisition of information understanding talks of the comprehension the dynamics the working principles that produce that result so you are not just seeing an effect or whatever it is you understand the underlying principle and then wisdom is the ability to apply it so that you now get a tangible result knowing that fasting and prayer will help you grow that's just understand that's just knowledge knowing what in fasting and what in prayer makes you grow is understanding then engaging it sincerely and passionately so that your life becomes the result of all that gist is wisdom you can know it you can teach it and never walk in it now this is the challenge with many in the body of christ there is hardly i have i've said it again and again that i am i don't think that the body of christ is in ignorance the challenge of the body is not ignorance by the grace of god we have gone past the realm of ignorance there's almost no dimension of the system and the realities of the kingdom that you bring to the body of christ that people will be shouting as though they've never heard it no it may just be presented in another way maybe more intelligently or more comprehensively in more detail and clarity articulated more more intelligently but generally they understand they have an idea that such a dimension is in the kingdom but very few people are able to walk in it and God has declared for us that this is a year of triumph I don't want you see knowledge is to know understanding is to hear the message wisdom is to engage it and then you see the results in your life if you don't see the results in your life you will be frustrated first in the secret and then later on the frustration will so build you cannot hide it again it will become clear that this thing is frustrating you like many people are already giving up this is half of the year already and many people are just packing up and saying lord this thing doesn't work no you're not understanding it is what makes it look like it doesn't work i can switch this mic off and, and think because i switched it off it doesn't work no there is a system knowing that you can use a mic to amplify your voice is just knowledge understanding the dynamics of his operation a comprehension of the same that's understanding then switching it on and using it now qualifies me to enjoy the blessing i can hold a mic i can draw it i can snap with it and never amplify my voice please i want you to be frustrated um not i don't mean it in a negative way but i i want you i think a better word is to be dissatisfied with acquisition of so many spiritual informations with less than 10 percent of them experientially manifesting in your life nobody works well under such a condition hallelujah you must cry for knowledge it's better for me to know god 10 percent and have an experience of him seven percent that's an a student in the spirit because you are gauged based on what you know than to claim to know God 60% and your result shows 2%. That's a very terrible situation. Some even claim 90% and the result is 1%, 1 the experience. V 
perfect your spiritual life to make sure you are really getting this thing if you are not getting it stop running retreat and find out where did i miss it i've just been acting acting without understanding lord where have i missed it because you see life will test you and force you to reveal whether you understand this word or not hallelujah but the bible says the light shines in the darkness and the darkness comprehended it not it is my desire from the depth of my heart that many of us are going to begin to produce extraordinary results in our lives don't let anyone ever fool you that it does not matter sooner or later you will see that god's obsession is in our bearing fruit hearing john 15 verse 8 hearing is our father glorified when you bear much fruit right so shall you be my disciples that is the proof that you have been listening to me sisters if you give birth to a baby and you've been breastfeeding this baby every day for one year two years three years and then the baby cannot walk cannot grow cannot talk what happens to the mother do you celebrate the child and say it's all right i know you are coming up no you know there is a problem so when you have been taking the milk of the world the meat of the world the bones of the world and eventually no growth no result no transformation something is wrong something is wrong there is a difference between the weight in faith and the weight hopeless waiting that is as a result of you're not even knowing what you are doing are we together like a farmer plants he knows by the dry season there's a bumper harvest waiting for him so he waits in hope he waits in faith but someone who never went to the farm if he starts buying bags waiting for september that's not a wise man please learn this nothing just happens everything that must happen in your life and my life will require you engaging the mysteries of the kingdom engaging the mysteries of the kingdom not random engagement engaging the mysteries of the kingdom you understand the mysteries that have been apportioned to deliver the results you want the results you want hallelujah Let's get down to the business of tonight extraordinary fruitfulness one time jesus was on his way doing his father's business and the bible says that he saw a fig tree and the leaves were green it looked very attractive and then the bible says that jesus came very hungry he came hoping to find something to eat and when he came in hunger he saw that tree blossoming yet there was no fruit and then the bible says he cursed the tree cursed it and spoke over it that no fruit will grow there again the bible there shows us how it grieves the heart of the father to see a believer a ministry a family a people an individual who cannot produce evidences that validate that God is alive fruitfulness is a big deal to God fruitfulness is a big deal to God it's not just a proof that you are growing fruitfulness is a sign that God is not a liar his integrity is at the mercy of your fruitfulness to be validated here on earth that he is not a liar god is a god that expects fruitfulness he gave a parable of the talents matthew 25 he gave unto one five two and one he expected multiplication he expected fruitfulness the first manifestation of the blessing that he gave man is be fruitful are we together not just subdue not just have dominion be fruitful it was not a suggestion it was a command 
meaning i have put in you all the resources that will take to produce a life of fruitfulness genesis chapter 12. now the lord had said to abram this is the lord having an encounter with an idol worshiper whose life is about to change who will epitomize greatness for the believer who will become the portrait of god's idea of greatness a portrait of god's idea of a blessed man a portrait of god's idea of success a portrait of god's idea of a balanced christian life that is both useful to the advancement of the kingdom and at the same time to humanity he says now the lord had said unto abraham get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that i will show you verse 2 as at this time this was this was not yet his experience it was god's proposal to him come out of a system and submit yourself through a season of dealing and if you successfully pass through that this will be the result verse 2 and i will make of thee a great nation and i will bless thee and make thy name great and thou shalt be a blessing verse 3 and then we'll stop there and i will bless them that bless thee and curse him that cursed thee and in thee shall how many all the families of the earth be blessed in you through you with reference to you as a foundation as a cornerstone the entire race the entire globe will be blessed now i like us to observe certain things here god meets an idol worshiper with his philosophies with his ideas are we together now having a little influence you would call him a local champion he was not a weak man he was not a failure as it were an idol worshiper and then he tells him let's go to verse one again abraham number one your name is wrong number two your life your philosophies everything i thought he would just bait him and say abraham i have great plans for you the thoughts that i have for you even if you know it i mean he said abraham the first requirement will be to leave your status quo your system listen in the economy of god and in the dealings of god when god begins to do business with a man he never uses you as you are please understand this you come as you are but you are never sent as you are you come as you are and then the first thing god proves in you is humility and meekness the beginning of the dealings of god in the life of a man the the starting point is when god sees that there is sufficient grace for humility and teachability this man was not a failure this man was a local champion in his own respect an idol worshiper a diviner an invoker of the heavens could manipulate strange powers to his advantage and here comes a word from a deity who calls himself the god of the hebrews and he says abraham get thee out you know how painful it is get thee out abraham i know this philosophy has worked for you but before i introduce a higher perspective get thee out i preached a message years ago from this scripture called come out of your father's house now many believers in the kingdom please listen carefully many believers in the kingdom when we come to god number one we come with our pride hoping that we are okay by ourselves then number two we hope that he will only add to what the garbages that culture the garbages that our mistakes our failures have given to us and we say lord i am here um let's just continue the classes and god says i don't know who that lecturer was but when i come to you even if you have been 10 years in this business my first requirement is that i isolate you you have to come out of that system you have to come out of that way of doing things 
we are talking about fruitfulness let's understudy Abraham very carefully because the Bible tells us please give us Isaiah 51 and verse 1 and 2 the Bible gives us an assignment that every time we want to study success fruitfulness greatness in the kingdom he gives us a figure he personifies God's idea of a life of impact in a figure and then he, this is what he says um, let's go to verse 2 he says look unto Abraham understudy him look unto Abraham your father and unto Sarah that bear you he says for I called him alone huh? and blessed him you see God is speaking in summary but it didn't happen as immediate as that I called him I blessed him I increased him three things I called him I blessed him I increased him I called him I blessed him I increased him this is knowledge when you now begin to seek understanding you know that it's not just I called him I blessed him that call in its own is a subject that is worth studying Abraham leave your father's house that's part of I called him are we together now and then he says I blessed him and increased him in other words he is my idea of a man truly called of God he's my idea of a man truly blessed of God and he's my idea of a man who has experienced increase then he says look unto him if you want to experience his result that order of fruitfulness look unto him I hope you know Abraham experienced barrenness in his life physical barrenness and that qualifies him to truly be a replica or a portrait of God's idea of fruitfulness when God calls you listen to me whether in ministry whether in business whether in career when God calls you you don't answer that call as a champion you don't answer that call as a colleague the moment God calls you he begins to scan through your life until he finds meekness everybody say meekness until he finds humility everybody say humility the first price the first genuine price for fruitfulness is not quoting scripture it's not even applying principles it's a state of meekness and humility write it down the first requirement anybody who will be fruitful who will produce extraordinary results in his life in your ministry in whatever it is you're doing knowledge is useless to a proud heart knowledge is useless understanding is useless wisdom is useless to a proud heart brothers and sisters I submit to you that there are many proud people in the body of Christ proud men of God proud students proud young people are we together now proud elderly people when he calls you he requires humility your humility is your past and then he begins to communicate to you now this looks very simple but you find out how many people want to be great you ask them do you want to be great they say yes I want to be an anointed man I want to carry the anointing I want to carry revelation I want fame I want power no I'm showing you the system of God God's economy and how people are grafted into this enviable dimension of fruitfulness and greatness the foundation is a humble heart the foundation is a humble heart Colossians chapter 3 verse 16 <coughs> Colossians chapter 3 verse 16 it says let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord it says let the word of Christ dwell in you richly listen carefully the word of Christ will never be able to pass through the entrance of your heart when there is pride and arrogance 
pride and arrogance pride and arrogance i know i think i know there are so many people that one single communication of humility would be the key to the next level but i know oh i'm educated enough i know look i'm not a child let me tell you something the moment submission becomes an embarrassment to you is a sign you are not a candidate for fruitfulness at all not just submission to a person submission to doctrines submission to mentorship submission to the teaching ministry of the spirit this i know mentality is the reason why many people keep failing in life i know my father is a pastor or was a pastor i know i was a bible study coordinator when i was on campus i know i married a pastor my husband is a pastor i know this and that you see all sorts of arrogant people many of us young people are arrogant i know i know what to do i know how to do this and we keep messing up and failing again and again sadly many of our parents i know and they have been balanced bringing forward seasons of failure and repeating it again with this i know mentality there's nothing i know that drives the spirit of god like a a proud and a haughty and a boastful heart do you want to be fruitful the first key is not just knowledge the first key is not even the leading of the spirit the first key is a broken and a contrite heart i show you the secret of great men they are they are the fortitude to break down and tremble before god where you lose the ability to argue with god god i, I is it that you have forgotten let me remind you uh -uh. abraham i know you have servants abraham i know you have a wife abraham i know you are a local champion but i'm about to take you to a dimension you never dreamt of first requirement get thee out please give it to us again genesis 12 verse 1 get thee out of your father's house get thee out of your kindred get thee out of your pride get ye out of your cocoon of boastfulness get ye thee out of your accolades i am a this i've held 10 crusades i am a man of god i am so 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 and so and so no get thee out of your country get thee out of your kindred get thee out of your father's house onto a land that I will show you are we together you want to be fruitful the first key is that disposition of humility everybody say grant me grace to be meek to be humble to be broken hallelujah I will never argue with God's opinion I'm too young I'm too small I'm too naive to argue with God's opinion he's the fountain of wisdom some of us have been trading this childlikeness this this reckless abandon for years and look what he's done look what he's done but there are many of us who are too big to learn at his feet too big to understand the precepts of the kingdom and we find out that we keep going around the wilderness almost forever number two genesis chapter 12 verse 1 still the second key listen the second key to the journey of fruitfulness the journey of greatness is total trust and confidence ah. i will go i will go anywhere you lead me I will go Lord I will go I will go anywhere you need yeah. I will go one more time I will go I will go
in God's economy he does not owe you explanation as to all the details of the journey the name of the mission is follow me the God I serve will never give you detailed instructions when you meet with God he doesn't start telling you one day he shows you the end and leaves you there he will never tell you what the process will be the mission is follow me why will I leave something I am sure of into something I am unsure of I'm sure of my country I'm sure of my kindred I'm sure of my father's house are we together you are sure of your certificate you are sure of the support of your parents you are sure that if you fail and there is no job your elder sister can be giving you 20,000 then he tells you come out to where a land that I will show you do you know what it means to ask an adult Oga, where are you going he says I'm following God <laughs> he says, I know I understand where to and he says honestly let me be sincere with you the only thing I know is the end of this journey I know that I will become a fruitful man I know that my name will be great I will be exceedingly fruitful that's all I know the, the dynamics of the journey has not been given to me but I trust him but I trust him many of you see great people and think God gave them the details it's faith that opened up the details home people started ministry people God sent people to lands first night they slept under the bridge what are you doing in Lagos sir God sent me you are a graduate come along with your certificate he asked me to leave it at home what are you now doing under the bridge this is the only place I know in Lagos yet God said you will raise a people listen a man who does not trust God will never experience fruitfulness this our carnal sensual generation that wants oh God you must show me how one plus one becomes two the mission is follow me if you trust him enough follow me I will go I will go Anywhere you lead me, hey, I will go. Listen, um, you know me, I'm a fan of responsibility. I like responsible people. But let me tell you something. Nobody's destiny appears from the beginning. The vision speaks in the end. It is follow me. I asked uh, Jimmy something one time. Jimmy, sorry, <clears throat> let me talk about you again. And Ejimi said something to me one time. He said, there is nothing as powerful as being close to somebody building something great. Nothing looks great from beginning. You only have the architectural plan, which is usually to you alone and maybe a few people. It is at the end when the vision becomes worthy of emulation. Then everybody starts saying, I used to know a Jimmy. I used to know Promise. I used to know Pastor Alpha. Don't worry, I know them. I remember when we were taking Gary and so on and so forth. You see, we live in a world where we are too obsessed about results before we start. Somewhere along the journey, we should see results. But you will be nasty to ask for results from the beginning of the journey. What you ask for is the word of God. That's the currency you use to start your journey to greatness. Where is the greatness with a patch on your trouser? Where is the greatness with one palms? Where is the greatness when you cannot afford 100 naira to bab your hair? Where is the greatness where the only Bible you can afford is Gideon's International that was given free during evangelism? But I know he called me. I know there is greatness I, I can't show you where it is where are the members where is the TV station where are the workers they are in the loins of trust I trust him I trust him my obedience of faith will eventually begin to bring them God is speaking to someone who has refused to move for years because you are waiting for results is a joke nobody gets results as an inheritance you get up and start walking on that water is as you walk on the water it begins to part 
if you are waiting for it to part before you walk you will die there at the red sea because pharaoh is coming tell the people of israel to move forward the bible says he parted the river with the breath of his nostrils did you see his nose physically it was a revelation that was given to a man so he was standing and waiting for them and i can imagine moses coming over 2.5 million people in the next five minutes you can be a dead man for bringing such a stupid news from the presence of god to people who know that within 24 hours the chariots of pharaoh will come back to kill them and moses said look this is what god told me move forward now bible history tells us that they start they entered the water and started moving when you watch your films or cartoons they just show the water part and the people smiling you don't need faith to smile and move when you can see dry land someone had to enter and say look if you people don't see me again know that i died believing and god says that's the person initiating me trust You are seated on the throne. Be my God. You are seated on the throne. Listen. Listen. If you had seen me 15 years ago, there are people who know me. Some of the things you celebrate today was not there. Everything was in the loins of the foolishness. Follow me. Follow me. Follow me. Who told you you are the first to be given that instruction? Are you the first gentleman to be established? Oh, I'm taking it easy. You know, a, a job has not come yet. And uh, you know the way we are. Please! I'm not a stupid person. I understand responsibility. The key to fruitfulness is, Lord, I trust you. If I perish, let it not be that I perished in armed robbery. But I perished. The first crusade that we were going to. No money no nothing we had just about 20 people i've shared it with you some of our ladies were climbing the tree firewood yet god told me one day i will bless nations and people are climbing firewood don't use today to judge the prophecy on your life it's a it's a costly statement never use your result or lack of it now to mean god did not speak when God speaks, he does not speak now. He looks at Gideon and says, Oh mighty man of failure. A man hiding under a chair. I'm bringing you intelligence tonight. Because there are many great men and women refusing to step out. Especially some of us brothers. I don't just mean step out carelessly. This fear factor must be broken. Nobody gives you guarantee. We're in a generation of guarant of guarantors. Open an account, I need a guarantor. Do business, I need a guarantor. What if something happens? Move on with your life. Start the building project. This risk averse, fearful mentality is a sign of carnality. It's not play it safe. In the kingdom, you play it as you trust him. When God says move, brothers and sisters, you close your eyes and step on that water and start moving. If it be thou, bid me come. And he said, Peter, come. Come, Peter. You've never done it. But it does not mean it can not be done. There are many of us today. There are many of our families. There are many of our fathers who would have completed their building project now. God spoke to them 10 years ago. They had 100,000. God said, "Go. it can buy one tipper of sharp sand. Go and pour it on the land there and intimidate the devil. Say, no, 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 you know, we're intelligent people. We went to school. You don't build like that. And it's 20 years. The person who was a mechanic at the back of your house now has five houses. But somebody who cannot trust God. Listen, the raw material in God's economy is faith. 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 Not uncle. Not auntie. God uses men. But it comes from God through men to you. When you want it from men, you will die like a chicken. Are we together? 
second key trust let me tell you something except it's not the god of heaven you are going to walk with no matter who assures you in the flesh get set for fatal disappointment god himself will orchestrate an event where all the strings will be cut and he will say walk have you seen how children walk no matter how you love your child a day will come you must allow that child walk and truthfully speaking the child will walk and even fall down and injure the person that does not mean walking is not a possibility you clean the wound and say stand up continue walking you don't tell people oh sorry you were building the house and rain washed it or you know or, no the church has become a weak place no results because we cannot trust God I trust God though, except I don't hear him if God says move there is no devil no devil in hell no devil in hell that can stop me because it is as you move that you commit him your step of faith puts pressure on his integrity to prove to you go and ask any great man in the kingdom nobody gave him any assurance all this auxiliary faith you see people i love god but what they mean is there is one uncle the uncle promised me that when it gets too hot i should run back no you are not standing by faith after two days you are disturbing everybody calling everybody and saying look i, I trusted god it's just that the way this thing is no you are not serious i mean if i perish i perish lord i would know you for myself now if you don't give me this rent let me sit outside and you would think it's a joke you are bringing your mattress outside to sit and god says ah this realm of trust gone are the days we used growing up we used to hear strange testimonies quarter to shame god vetoed with his integrity but now you don't hear those testimonies again because we never trust god that far we never trust god that far I was sharing with the school of ministry students uh, i can't remember when years ago when i was in kaduna I, I went to do something in kaduna and i was coming back to zaria my transport money was not complete i'm not saying you should do foolish things you do them at it as his word my transport money was not complete i was hungry and i said i'm standing at the road here and there's no assurance that anybody will give me transport there is a little restaurant there and food there is 15 era why stand and die here at least let me satisfy one of the two i entered and i ate beans and yam 15 naira. i knew i was in trouble brothers and sisters i remember standing at that road and the spirit of god spoke to me he said stop a car and enter i stopped a vehicle and i entered to zaria I didn't say hey, please uh, I'm a man of God there is a call of God on my life it's not clear now but I want you to trust me if I rise you will rise too if I eat you will eat too that's what we are doing now and we call faith I started engaging a conversation with someone when we passed Jaji and we were on our way coming then later the man the driver now started asking people to gather their money together and give him I knew I was in trouble but I knew I was not alone are we together now money can fail you men can fail you but his presence and his word will never fail never fail never fail if your confidence is in what you have in your bank account then something is really you are on your way to being frustrated if your confidence is because of one gold you bought and smuggled under a box or one one shoe or one whatever it is your confidence must be in the name of the lord his presence are you getting blessed tonight do you know the gentleman i was talking with just said ah don't worry he didn't even ask me my name don't worry and he brought out the money for two of us paid i dropped at um for that place flyover flyover i stood there at least what i had I, I can't remember whether it could bring me or not and the holy spirit told me to enter a bus again i entered the bus someone paid it i stopped at northgate with the same money i was at kaduna it was a message listen i've done stupid things in my life 
there are times that I believe God. Well, now I don't know whether it's God that spoke to me or not. But I remember trekking from area BZ to First Bank. By faith, believing there's money in my account. They were paying workers and I joined them. And when it got to my turn, they said there was no money. I was not embarrassed. I was walking my faith. I didn't use that. I knew that one day, no problem. I went there and they said, sorry, are you expecting a transfer? I said, yes. It has not reflected. No problem. After wasting two hours of my time, I thought it was a waste. But now I know it was a school. It was my school fees. I was paying my tuition fee in the school of faith. Because there is nothing that God says today that cannot be done. Listen. You don't grow just by reading the Bible. There must be an experience that will force you. Force you. For as long as all you are doing is just reading and quoting and counseling people. Counseling is easy. But one day God will say, Mr. Man, you have been encouraging people to walk on that water and you have been sitting down today. Walk on this water. And you have to stand up and walk. Everybody say, Lord, I trust you. Say it, Lord, I trust you. Say it one more time, Lord, I trust you. Government cannot assure anybody. Insurance cannot assure anybody. This person talking to you is not daft. I understand these things. None of those things can ensure you. A man who trusts the Lord can watch his house on fire. And other people are saying, hey, catch him. Let him not have hypertension. He say, me? Hypertension? Where is the hand that builds the house in the first place? I, I don't regret but he will enter and dance and rejoice with tears coming out of his eyes. He said, I can't lose sleep because my God has infinite supply. Now, that's a man who has been worked on by the Spirit. High blood pressure, depression is a sign of not trusting God. Period. It's an uncomfortable truth, but know it. There are doctors here. Ask them. Young people now, you see somebody of 21 years entering the hospital and talking to himself. Is it this room? Is it that? Are you, are you okay? He says, how can I be okay? Life. No. You don't trust God. So everybody wants this auxiliary thing. Ladies are looking for a man who has an evidence now. Shoe, car, estate. It's a joke. Brothers are looking for a lady who is working to wage them while they are looking for a job. Look at what society is becoming. A pastor is looking for quality members. Now we select the sheep. It's not just God that brings the increase. God brings the increase we choose. We throw away some sheep to die. Then we choose the quality sheep. Make them whatever it is, a pastor or elder or whatever, to pin them down. And we say we have faith. That's nonsense. Faith is when weak people come to you like David in the cave of Adullam and you tell them, look, I see the grace and the hand of God in you. And after three years, you produce signs and wonders and they bless them. There are people today God has used me to lift. I will never be hungry till Jesus comes. Now, you would think uh, he's just lucky. No, sir. No, sir. The beauty is always at the end of it. When you start out with God, brothers and sisters, you must trust him. Pray one minute and say, Lord, kill unbelief. Your ministry will depend on his word to grow. Your business, stop harassing people to bless you, give you money, support you. Please believe in the name of the Lord and let him trust you. Hallelujah. So he told Abraham. Told Abraham. Abraham, this is the deal. I know you don't know me. I'm not the idol you are worshipping. Leave these people. Let's go. 
the Bible says while he was going Lot went with him followed him several things started happening in his life and he said look let's separate and he was on his way going no child do you know how many years Abraham waited from the time of the word to the time of the child you have only waited two years and nobody rests again Lord you promised me that my husband is coming 2015 what happened with that vision that I saw that he has not landed till now you have prayed you have sold seed you see that's what you see people you harass every man of God around you because they are the representatives of God that you see where is my husband where is my breakthrough and God says look wait thou on me I will bring my word to pass and no 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 oh God look I need time is his age is not on my side how old are you are you learning something the price of trust trust is hard work let me tell you something about trusting God there are times you will ask him questions he will not answer you will ask him questions about other people's situations he will answer but he will never answer you on the matter that's God for you this is the God I serve you will counsel someone now and hear him expressly and counsel the person and say my God and say Lord I've been talking to you about this issue of my family then he goes silent again then another person comes you you can almost think it's a mistake that you are backsliding until another person comes for counseling then the heavens are open and you are hearing clearly and suggesting things and someone is sending you a text and saying pastor alpha you are one of the greatest men of god i've met and you are saying lord look at this text and i'm crying that you come and wipe my tears in this area and he keeps quiet every time god is keeping quiet he's watching you <sighs> every time god is silent i want you to know he's watching you you know that song please take it lower my voice I want to sing the song. The keeper of Israel, he'll never sleep nor slumber. He's watching over me. The keeper of Israel, he'll never sleep nor slumber. He's watching over me. Now, where is your child my child is in my trust coming my child is in my trust Penina is laughing at me don't worry my child is in my trust young man where is your God where are the results that at your age nothing is working you are making it look like serving God is a mockery don't worry there are times that God will allow people to finish talking nonsense. Then that's when he comes in majestically and lifts you in a way that everyone will see. But many of us don't trust him. Let's admit it tonight and cry for greatness. This ministry you see by the grace of God is a product of trust. There are some of you who have lost things, lost loved ones. Against the prophecy God told you, keep trusting. Are we together? Keep trusting. Keep trusting. Because when you hold on and trust him, overnight, he will route your breakthrough truth to a, another way that you never thought possible. Pay attention to what I'm teaching you. I'm speaking to you by the Spirit tonight. Because there are people here. This your complaint and shouting around everybody is not a blessing to heaven. You must learn to smile in the midst of the storm. It's a sign that you trust Him. There is nothing happening to you today that is new. Apostles have not eaten. There was a time in the Bible women were eating their children. You are not that hungry to cut a beautiful baby like this, our baby, and eat. Do you know what the Bible says? Can a mother forget a suckling child? Two women ate one child. What hunger? Then 
when it was a turn to eat the child of the other one and then the other one said no 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 and the other woman said not so and they met a prophet of god and he said by this time tomorrow is the training that takes time the manifestation happens overnight don't ever call god jehovah sharp sharp during training you are joking sharp 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 is during manifestation not training this foolishness that flies around the body of the body of christ that is making us fools we want everything today once there is a little delay people say you don't have faith be careful many of the things you call lack of faith is a process in the spirit i've done a teaching here called the furnace of affliction many people are, are, are talking their nonsense let, let me tell you i'm old enough to know what speed and process is the path to the throne is the cross you will never dodge the cross and arrive at the throne if what you saw was a throne and you can't remember the experience of the cross start running away because that's not a throne satan wanted jesus to dodge the cross and get to the throne jesus said not so there is a protocol so brothers and sisters when you are carrying your cross like jesus and they are saying physician heal thyself you healed others you raise others what is wrong with you now don't answer them jesus didn't open his mouth wasting his time he just continued carrying his destiny are we together now because let me tell you brothers and sisters behind every glory there is a story you are writing your story now don't be ashamed of it keep trusting don't be ashamed that you did it and lie no people get people get sick and go and hide drugs they hide drugs and swallow and come and say for 20 years no don't be ashamed of your pain you are writing your story tomorrow you will stand before everybody and say you know me you know Saul you know Paul ah. Lord you took my pain away and then you gave me joy you're my peace my melody in the center of the storm you gave me a brand new song to sing to you that's why I will lift up my voice and sing yeah. seasons in your life what you are running away from today you will miss it tomorrow what you are going through today is what will sustain your greatness hear what i'm telling you i'm speaking to you by the spirit don't run away from your pain carry the cross pay the price pay it honorably don't tell lies i cannot afford gary now it doesn't mean i'm irresponsible I'm a tighter. I trust God. I'm walking my way with integrity to fruitfulness. There are so many packaging and lies. You borrow 100,000, buy a shoe, buy hair, buy a shirt, buy suit, buy Bible, buy iPad, and say I'm in ministry. Or okay? God, walk it slowly. You may, you may take pap for one week. Don't be ashamed. If a visitor wants to visit you don't beg your friend to go to his house and say that's my house don't be ashamed of your father your father is a carpenter your father is an iron bender <coughs> you are lying and saying your family are abroad don't ever don't be ashamed of your pain it is what validates your testimony tomorrow when you rise and people say you faked it someone say i knew him oh I knew that brother when he was tightening and soaking Gary. Rejoice not over me, my enemy. Christians, hear me. I know that you watch those who were your classmates. They are going and God is saying, wait back. Don't, don't cry. Don't ever find yourself crying. Because one step with his voice will over. It will give you 10 years result overnight. 
many people will insult me for what i'm telling you now because it's an unconventional path but that's the path to the throne that's where we follow to be where we are today rejoice not over me my enemy stop this life of lies and packaging no the word is working whether you see results or not if you are sick go to the hospital with honor the healing ministry is still on your head it will come it will manifest God told you you will be a bishop over churches in nations and three years into the ministry you have 20 members don't lie and write online that you have 30 branches and 50 people why fake what will eventually be real Lord I trust you oh I trust you I trust you I trust you and I rejoice I'm not ashamed of my pain I'm not ashamed of where I am if all I can take today is Gary I take it with honor and pride if you visit me you will join me taking that Gary if you think you are too big no problem I honor you but don't rush my seasons let me go through it let me go through it I know we started ministry together now you have 1,000 members I have 10 members our anointings are not the same the higher the anointing the deeper the call the higher the anointing the more the greater the weight unhealthy comparison all kinds of things destroying the body of Christ when you want a genuine anointing you must be ready to dig deep you must be ready to dig deep there are times God will tell other come to sin other ladies will be moving and God will say you stay back and you say God you have started with me again God says just walk with me see let me tell you if your work with God does not cause you to ask questions, you are not working with him. Because you, you walk with God one day and say, God, what is this? Then he keeps quiet. You are reaching your breaking point. Because a day will come, you say, Lord, whether you ever bless me again or not, since I've come this far, I've, there's a way you enter fire, it burns you, there's nothing to burn again. What made you cry yesterday is what will make you rejoice today. That's spiritual maturity. That's why you see men, somebody persecutes you and says, Pastor Alpha is not he, he's, he's somebody who is doing this and that and he doesn't even pray about it. You have sat in that fire long enough. That fire has roasted every flesh. There's nothing left there again. This overconsciousness, the need to explain yourself is a sign that you have not been broken in his presence. Many people see manifestations like this, like what is happening. They desire it. They put their hand on their head and then they think all to get it is to package 10,000 naira. Is that what you pay for the school fees of your, your, your school? You package 10,000 naira and no, you can take an anointing but not a track record. The track record must be even husband and wife, you won't pass through this together. No matter how close you are, when it comes to this journey, let me tell you, I know you love yourselves but God will isolate you and put you it's amazing a husband and his wife can be married but be going through experiences both of them cannot explain to themselves that's the dealings of God that's why you must be sensitive that's why we say people must be born again to marry and serious with God because of these seasons a time will happen you get up in the morning and see your husband like a madman strolling in front of the parlor don't think he's stupid it's not depression it's a season even him he cannot articulate the name of what is happening to him and women like knowing my husband what is it that i'm not cooking well for he says look you are too innocent to be carried into this furnace just stay there when i win i will let you know and the man says this is the valley of the shadow of death I can't watch you and my innocent children or whoever just stay there and you see him wake up time to eat a delicious meal he just turns that plate upside down and there's no appetite listen the training of a spiritual man is hard this is why you talk about them in the secret God will punish you in the open you don't know what a, it's a covenant pain is a covenant in the realm of the spirit Psalm 50 verse 5 
gather unto me my sins they that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice for every time you cry and still trust him it's a covenant you are entering with him you may not know for every time he did not show up and people say where is your God and you frown back in shame and say Lord I didn't have an answer for them but you are still my God it's a covenant you are entering somebody insults that altar is a joke I taught you on altars last week no sir that's why when you hear certain men of God talk you think he's pride you may not respect them but respect the blood on their altar because there is blood there God will not give you a mic and call people just because you think you have been in ministry for years no sir you don't like tonight's message it doesn't look very nice I show you the making of spiritual people you want fruitfulness it's not just a key point a b c d I'm leading you some of you I'm revealing to you what you are about to enter because it's a season God said it's your year of triumph welcome to the season when the other side of the training will start it's not a cause listen listen hold on there is a difference between temptation and trials listen let me correct something here God never tempts people where you see tempt written with respect to God it was an error in translation temptation is a trap trial is a test it's an exam God will never tempt you the goal of temptation is to destroy you the goal of a trial is to build you are we together now when those seasons come do not think it is unusual you want power you want grace you want to prophesy to someone you want to speak over people and let them come to testify brothers and sisters it's not suit and tie it's not designers it's a track record it's blood and tears and pain you want God to give you the wealth of nations overnight it will not happen just by luck everybody say trust <laughs> say trust Genesis 17 let's read from verse 1 to 6 thank you darling Genesis 17 quickly when Abraham was how old 90 years old Bible students how was he how old was he when God called him help me 75 90 years old Abraham had not yet seen that promise and that blessing and he was still walking God came and just reminded him hey, my God when Abraham was 90 years old and nine hundred minus one the Lord appeared to Abraham and said unto him I am the Almighty God walk thou before me and be perfect you are reading to verse 6 and I will make my covenant between me and thee and I will multiply thee what say fruitfulness I will multiply you after waiting so long I will still do it exceedingly verse 3 and Abraham fell on his face and God talked with him saying we are reading to verse 6 as for me behold my covenant is with thee Abraham remember the discussion we had in chapter 12 I came to remind you that it's still in force although your life has not seen it continue don't give up let me tell you how to know God is leading you sometimes in the midst of that fire help will not come it's a reminder you know how an alarm is tan 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 I know that fire is roasting you but just calm down I'm still alive God where are you I've always been there watching you so he's reminding Abraham thou shalt be a father of many nations just an updated translation of Genesis 12 read on neither shall thy name anymore be called Abraham but thy name shall be called what Abraham for a father of many nations have I made thee verse 6 and I will make thee exceedingly fruitful and I will make nations of thee and kings shall come out of thee Abraham continue Abraham continue 
it's been five years oh god every brother that wants to come to me you drive him away god says i know exactly what i'm doing just keep walking why are you doing this to me and god says continue to walk brothers and sisters there is one thing i can tell you the dealings of god with men is like pregnancy you've seen a woman pregnant a woman does not throw away her pregnancy because she's vomiting blood because she's coughing because she's doing whatever you will still carry it whether they are twins or triplets you won't beg that one child should come to your head because they are heavy you are still going to god has put an exact position where that child must stay if you had a choice you would transfer it to your head to make it easy but that's not god's way you will leave that child there that pregnancy will twist you you who used to be a nice beautiful lady still carry the pregnancy the pregnancy will force you to want food that is smelling smoke you who will not even eat food but now the pregnancy has so deshaped you and redefined your appetites keep going because when that child is born it is the giving birth that will bring people to you they won't just come to visit you for nothing except God has not spoken you will see triumph this year forget whatever it is that is happening except the God of heaven has not spoken you will see it happen I trust him I trust him I trust him trust him show us the ancient paths would you lead us along eternal highway we want to walk in the footsteps of Jesus we want to enter your rest Show us the ancient past Would you lead us along Eternal highway We want to follow the ways of Jesus We want to enter your rest I wish I didn't have to preach this today I wish I could just tell you all there was to success and fruitfulness is just drop money receive an impartation let it roll you on the ground and all of a sudden listen this is a painful key to a sustainable destiny there tonight there's no male and female if you want to pass through that road you are genderless when it comes to that that deal you won't say reduce the training because i'm a woman there is no woman in this process because you are working with your spirit you will pass through don't let your tears stop you <clears throat> you may cry oh but continue god is speaking to someone don't let your tears ever stop you don't let the naysayers bring words to you and say i thought you claim you are called and then because of that you now say okay let me organize a seven days prayer meeting to prove to these people i'm called god didn't send you you are now compounding both fullness of affliction and temptation you are joining them together to kill yourself no. satan came when jesus was hungry and thirsty and said if you are the son of god turn this stone to bread he had the power to make it happen he said no I don't have to prove it the voice has already declared it with power that i'm the son of god trust 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 submission brokenness then the next step trust please sit down let me give you two more and then we'll pray the third key to being fruitful is an encounter with the spirit of revelation write it down the third key to being fruitful is an encounter with the spirit of revelation when you trust God and you begin to walk with him 
he will use your life and use everything around you to begin to expose you to the manifestation of the spirit of revelation the spirit of revelation is not knowledge the spirit of revelation is not knowledge the spirit of revelation brings you into not just an awareness but um how do i put it now it is it's really the word intercourse is the word koinonia is sharing together with that information such that you are not just aware you become an expression of it the spirit of revelation god begins to show you how things work and because you are already broken and you are at your low estate there will not be pride and argument you will listen he will speak to you he will guide you precept upon precept he will lead you to a book a book by a man of God you would have never bought in your times of pride but now because you have been broken you will go and sit down and settle down on that book you are learning while you are learning nothing yet as at yet is happening but you are building knowledge understanding revelation insight insight is very important if you must bear fruit listen the birth of anything valuable is painful anything valuable you don't mind gold on the surface right you dig deep there are certain levels of insight no matter how much you are a christian god will not just hand it over to you at a platter of gold there is a posture you must take in the spirit to appreciate it so god will wait you may hear a man of god preach it but it will be unfruitful to you until a season activates the need for it then god now begins to bring you that revelation and it starts making sense yea though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death you have been reading it you recited it when you were in sunday school but now that you are really in the valley of the shadow of death that scripture means a lot to you i fear no evil for thou art with me thy rod and thy staff they comfort me and the word comes with light I remember the time we gave an instruction to dance i know that many people didn't do it do you know why because there's no need for it in their life you see if i give you touch light in the daytime you will appreciate me and just throw it away and even forget where it is but if nepa takes light you'll be looking for your phone the slightest light you will crawl and not be ashamed to look for it it is wasteful to supply people light that they have not yet communicated a need for they won't appreciate it you know growing up in ministry i always wondered why in pastors conferences when a man of god is preaching he can say something simple and you see pastors crying they are usually the ones standing up when a man of god is preaching and someone there is just laughing and say guy this man has energy to be standing up then the person laughing now marries a pastor you see that and after five years of hellfire the next time they go for a conference they say let's wave our hands the person is rolling jo wave your hands to god and say, i can't wave my hands oh god wave my hand is what i do in my room i will roll here because you have now seen the need for that revelation some of you what you are hearing today will not be applicable to you today the holy spirit will store it in a bank it will be after four years huh four years one night you will pant after this message you will find it you will gasp for it you will borrow phones borrow lantern and sit down and listen to it the price of revelation the bible says, buy the truth everybody say the truth is costly say it again the truth is costly yes it will cost you time listen you don't attract to your life what you love you attract to your life what you respect to love a thing is to find it desirable to respect a thing is to find it valuable there are two different things you never attract to your life what you love you attract to your life what you honor what you respect to love a thing or a person is to find that thing or that person desirable an emotional connect 
but to respect a thing is to find it valuable he said right for these words are faithful and true i've been a student in the school of revelation this bible you see when i'm lying down to sleep it's on my bed when i wake up it's following me wherever I'm. forget how old you are seeing it like this this bible has i've worked with this bible for a while and i have found secrets therein secrets that can turn any man to become every word that god spoke concerning him nobody will spoon feed you thank god for devotionals thank god for um Esau. thank god for concordances but brothers and sisters if you want to know god you want to grow in the world you have to sit down this spoon feeding of believers now I, of course i'm a, I'm, I'm not I'm not against access to devices and things that will help us but there is nothing that will replace sitting down in one place and giving the word time I'm too busy I'm too busy then you see your life nose diving they are life to those who find them and health to their flesh some of you open your Bible only on Friday during Koinonia you close it on Friday only to open it on Friday again or on Sunday that's not a good testimony let me tell you you will need to be serious with the word of god this is like a treasure chest your spirit opens to me the treasures of your word and i will forever sing your praise your spirit opens to me the treasures of your word and i will forever sing your praise i will sing i will sing of the wonders of your word i will sing now for joy i will sing i will sing of the wonders of your word and i will forever whatever you spend time with you become that thing you spend time in a beer parlor you become a drunkard you don't become a pilot in a beer parlor you spend time in a beer parlor you become you spend time playing games computer games you become a computer game professional you spend time in the farm you become you don't become a doctor you spend time in his presence you become an envoy that's what happens a testament that the word of god is alive spend time in his presence don't say i'm busy doing what god gave you 24 hours to seek him if you are seeking him properly it is enough some of us are snoring away our destinies when we should be seeking him some of us are eating away our destinies when you should be seeking him some of us are gisting and gossiping away our destinies when we should be seeking him i'd like you to pray and say lord restore my passion for scripture pray pray before we continue restore my passion for scripture i don't know what happened to me but lord restore my passion for scripture the excuses that i give the laziness this spiritual inertia that came upon me and is making me barren and unfruitful in the world you are a pastor pray this prayer twice because you can be studying the bible just to get messages not to encounter god and not to grow you are a man of god here you are a ministry paid twice hallelujah psalms 82 verse 5 to 7 says they know not please give it to us psalms 82 and verse 5 they know not 
neither will they understand it says they walk on in darkness and all the foundations of the earth are out of course i want us to look at verse 5 in amplified if it's possible please give it to us if it's not possible then we'll just go let's look at it i want you to see the way amplified puts it the magistrates and judges know not neither will they understand listen they walk on in the darkness of complacent satisfaction and then he says all the foundations of the earth the fundamental principles upon which rest administration and justice are shaking please go back to king james verse 6 says have i not said regardless of your state it does not change my prophecy your lack of revelation and understanding robs you but my prophecy still remains the same have i not said ye are gods and all of you are children of the most high verse 7 tragedy it says but you shall die like mere men and fall like one of these princes so i have said you are gods but it doesn't mean you will manifest it between prophecy and manifestation is access to revelation understanding the working knowledge of the word the epignosis we call it many times god delays your lifting to help you understand the laws you are you are going to be working with like tools god delays your lifting to help you understand these laws you don't learn these laws when you are on stage no life is very unforgiving for the unprepared so he delays you a bit yeah. and keeps you so that you will learn it you never knew that praise was a weapon you thought it was something they do before messages come and then in that cave of adulam the spirit of revelation comes to you and says look praise is not just about singing songs dancing is not just about moving your body clapping is not just about making sounds and he begins to teach you that your tears are a mystery in the spirit your laughter is a mystery in the spirit and all of a sudden you see situations that can crash your life down and the spirit of god tells you laugh now because you know this law you will not think you are you are you are you are mad you will laugh do you know in psalm 2 let me show you something about laughter laughter is a mystery the irony is that every time god wants to judge he laughs before he starts judgment psalm 2 give it to us why do the hidden rage and the people imagine a vain thing next verse the kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the lord and against his anointed saying let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us verse 4 he that seated in the heavens shall do what help me shall do what if we ask promise come if i ask promise to stand here and i say promise talk to us and all of us start laughing at him i mean real laugh some of you the way you laugh if somebody he can even cry just watching you laugh now imagine all of us keep laughing at him what do you think will happen to him let me tell you something about laughter laughter is a weapon that disarms the devil it's a it's a dangerous spiritual arsenal that believers do not know the bible says, rejoice in the lord and again i say rejoice when you see people under the anointing you see them laughing you know the trouble that they were complaining of before they fell under the anointing they are laughing and they stand up and they are ashamed of themselves they are cleaning their powder and they are, they are instead of them to rejoice whatever made the holy ghost to make you laugh don't you think it's a good thing because when god laughs start rejoicing but the enemies his enemies who have made themselves your enemies as i'm going to be showing you now he that seated in the heavens shall laugh the lord shall have them in derision verse 5 after laughing then he shall what speak to them don't worry this is a ministry of signs and wonders you know that 
then he shall speak to them this laughter you see that is happening is by the spirit don't think people are faking it for those of you who are new it's the it's of the spirit right remember the bible says and the lord walking with them confirming the word so as the spirit of god is speaking this is what is called this is not a miracle these are signs and wonders it's a ministry where as you are speaking there is a grace for performance it's a sign to both believers and unbelievers to show the level of accuracy of the person speaking and to show that this is truly of god are we together now i'm explaining it to you so you see she's not the only person who will laugh you'll see people laugh all around but it is by the spirit you can't sit down and be laughing like this that's a beautiful lady if she should watch herself laughing like that she will stop so this is by the spirit it's all right let's let's continue after laughing after laughing what do you think he will do then she shall speak to them in what so that laughter was not just because he's happy he's laughing at what he as a as a principle before you know how somebody's about to beat you <laughs> let me just smile that's what god is doing there it's in your bible i'm showing you mysteries mysteries that all that's why the first sign of the spirit of depression ask doctors is the absence of laughter when two people are fighting what's the first thing that disappears not love laughter laughter so you turn your way i turn my way and the devil is happy but all of a sudden you see your result or your boss tells you we are going to downsize people and your name is on the list we have been eyeing you we are hoping to drive you and now that we are found and you just tell him god bless you sir you say I, i'm talking and you are still smiling no no i'm not smiling at you sir i'm just god is faithful i'm smiling because i know my god is alive not a sarcastic laugh but a laugh in confidence a brother comes and said i've changed my mind i will marry you again and it's okay god be the glory you can laugh with tears coming out of your eyes just do it it's a mystery it's not about i feel like you are engaging a mystery when you tight you don't feel like you are moved by that revelation listen there are many cheap pathways to victory in the spirit that we do not know some of you hate those that are always happy and laughing the bible says, a merry heart a merry heart not just a merry mouth not just a merry faith your heart can laugh too your heart can be happy and it will show i'm not talking of this clownish thing you can be happy the joy of the lord this depression that many of us are carrying you don't know that depression is like a door that you open for the spirit of darkness and it sits on your destiny you never see me frowning and pulling my face as if the whole world is falling god is alive two of us can't be awake if he's awake i sleep And then judgment follows immediately there are times what you need to do is to write a request of all the things that have mocked you and laugh before God and say Lord I've cried but I won't cry again and laugh before him switch to dancing switch to praise musician or not if you cannot sing find this high evil praise high evil praise those people did not produce that album for money you 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 see the consecration in their lives you know they meant it the the, the scriptures they quote before the song starts that's that's called warfare praise don't let people tell you there is no such thing right psalms 149 let the high praise of god be in their lips and a double-edged sword in their hands there is a warfare dimension of praise when all else fails switch to praise dance your life and turn every hell around the same way Yoruba people dance before a rich man they play drums and dance he wants to enter his car they call his name and shake their head and dance before you know it he will reach out to his pocket and bring out what he did not plan for was it not a lady that danced before Herod what is it about her dance she danced before Herod and removed the head of a prophet what is troubling you is not a prophet. Can I remove the head? 
Kenneth Copeland asked Bishop Oyedeko and said, you claim we are the ones who mentored you in the word of faith. But why is it that God has given you this increase? So much members. And Bishop Oyedeko said he danced every one person in this church into that place. See, let me tell you, I don't like dancing. God, I, I, do you know, you look at me and you know that I don't have that gift. But it's a weapon. Do you use a weapon just because you like it? You use it for efficiency. knowledge of the principles of the kingdom so you know what to do your rent is expiring that's not the time to pray wrong spiritual approach no it's too late you would have been praying since you saw the signal you have been having a lot of dreams the moment it is quarter to shape don't pray dance rejoice please learn this thing i'm teaching you the weapons of war he said with wise counsel make war quarter to shame get one koinonia message get one worship team people come and give them honorarium let them record something and sing and dance put it in your pocket if all your phone has is movies and games you are not ready for life you must have these arsenals in place so that the moment the devil strikes you know the song already you bring it out hallelujah and you watch battles turn around overnight overnight battles turn around overnight listen you want to be fruitful the longest period of your waiting process will be invested in knowledge spiritual intelligence knowledge you have trusted god you are humble but let me tell you the classes of the realm of the spirit is not semester by semester. You see that? It's a product of many things. God's course is not three credit load. It is your desire that can turn it into three credit, six credit. You can do a lecture two weeks and you have finished a class. And the next class is two years. You stay there. God's classes is not like a, an exact period of three, three months. No way. You can be two years in a class. He will give you break. Then you do another elective and call you back. Not to a higher cost, the same cost. Let's continue. Lord, I thought we finished. No, we finished what? Let's continue. But when you are done, you will see the value of that thing. For a student, you can miss a few lectures and read quickly during the exam and make up. In the school of the spirit, you miss one class. That class you have missed will show in your destiny. That lecture you did not attend. The floor will be very clear in your destiny. God's, God's dossier for attendance must be 100%. Even if you have graduated and you have 89%, you must complete that remaining. That's why some of you will be embarrassed. That after many years, you see God drawing you to certain things that you think are basic. Just walk with him. Walk with him and sit quietly and let him deal with you. You think that you have finished the issue of the flesh. And then one day as a great man of God, God calls you for a fresh lecture. And the theme of the lecture is crucifying the flesh. And you start again. Don't fight him. Be humble and stay. Say, Lord, help me. You thought you have overcome loss for money. And then after 20 years of ministry, God asks you to go for a retreat. And you don't talk about pride, whatever. God says, I just want to kill the influence of mammon. And he said, Lord, I thought when I started with you, he said, we didn't finish that course. I only gave you a break. Or you stop attending lectures. But now that you are ready to come back, you don't do superstar with God. If you miss lectures for 10 years, the day you meet with God again, you go back and continue from where you started. Now, men don't expect you to go back. This is the challenge I have with celebrities who become born again someone was a secular for instance a secular musician are we together now and then the guy gets born again and then you bring him to church and he's already used to the flamboyancy of stage life then you make him music director no way if he comes to church he must join if you have a foundation class he must go through that principle and learn and know god that his gifted is not enough is he spiritual it takes time to be spiritual you don't impact spirituality 
hallelujah everybody say revelation say knowledge when you see a man that is full of light and revelation when God gives the green light look at David David was in the wilderness and God kept training him with the sleep the moment it was time to destroy Goliath he went with confidence when you shake in the time of battle it's a sign that you are not sure of your arsenals are we together now and he defeated Goliath effortlessly my personal goal is to have access to the mysteries as many if not all that I will need for my life and destiny and to fulfill God's call for my life so that no matter what arises before it lands is meeting a mystery mysteries are not words that I coined out that's the name of the system of God's operation he operates in mysteries Matthew 13 verse 11 it has been given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom Matthew 13 11 it has been given to you we do business in this kingdom on the strength of the mysteries that we know someone looks at you and says promise you will never rise in this life that person is not just making an empty statement that person is speaking on the strength of something maybe divination you don't just stand and say it will never happen it will happen until you have a mystery an understanding something you know that can oppose it are we together now yes if i push this guy he should fall down but if he's stronger than me he can create another force that will resist whatever i'm trying to do then he will stand you don't stand in life not holding anything and dare the devil and dare witches and wizards like many arrogant people are doing in the body of christ if you know you have power come and kill us in the village and you hear silence no answer the only thing you see is that after one week the only thing you can do is to see you can't talk you can't stand you can't stand up you can't walk that was the answer from the realm of the spirit to you and saying be careful make sure you see god before you stand before pharaoh but by the grace of god with the training you are receiving here let me tell you i pity whoever rises against you one dance one dance one hour of proper dance in the presence of god will crumble that person to his knees i tell you this don't just hear these things alone a devourer is coming you pick up your tithe and say lord i am a titan i am a tighter i stand as a family we are tighters my business is a tithing business devourer i rebuke you and satan says he knows he knows he understands you can be a tighter and he will still destroy you you speak based on knowledge the bible says knowledge uh, how did he put it wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of your times what do you know that can bail you out in this period of languishing recession and pain what do you do when you are the only person who is born again in your family and everybody is opposing you do you know there is something you can engage please everybody say after me excuse me say after me in the name of jesus what i need to do in the face of danger in the face of challenges i receive access to it it is costly to stand stupefied watching life not knowing what to do he said jesus himself knew what to do jesus himself knew what to do you find out that you've been married six months People are asking you, Madam, we are not seeing anything. Don't worry. Don't start getting angry and saying, what is your business? No. Just say, Lord, I give you thanks. One year, two years, three years, it looks like no child is coming. Don't start being cynical and see every woman with a child and you are angry and saying, they are laughing at me. No. 
father i give you praise start practicing the law of honor you see pastor alpha and his wife and their child what do this child want oh this child needs a shoe you quickly go and buy the shoe you are engaging mystery see waiting for things to change i told you is the secret of frustration you engage you only wait when you know you are engaging some of us have been sitting waiting if you are waiting to know what to do then that's wise if you are waiting for things to change apostle nobody is coming to marry me engage engage do something engage doesn't mean to travel and go to a married man's house somewhere <laughs> to engage means find someone who has married find a family find one mother somewhere you see our mothers all around one day you can find a mother package five for life package something wrap her and say mommy please i see that you are married with seven children they are all alive and they are responsible that grace upon your life i've taught you commanding result these are the various mysteries you must be treating for you to rise and you engage it the woman will just hold it and say my daughter may god bless you i bless you i remember it was pastor Corey de komaya that was sharing a story he has twins and um um was bishop aremo of living faith you know i think they have twins too and one time his wife was with the wife of bishop aremo and then she looked at her and said you self uh -uh, you've not given birth to you've not given birth again and she said mommy no and she took her veil and stoned her with it she said take twins job like joke that's how she was pregnant with twins and gave birth with twins there are mantles so there are people who are careers of your prayer point bodily they are working in it when you know how to tap into what your portion is you will find out that where, what is killing others you will walk over it there's no food in your house you find somebody who has enough to give and buy one mudu of gari and take to his house it looks like it's, it's not it's not correct but that's how we rise in the kingdom the lesser you have 500 naira left don't wait till it's 20 naira i don't know how one tier how much one tier of gari is you buy it buy lollipop for the children you don't even have to tell them that's why you came just like boy take once they open your lollipop and they're taking start rejoicing they are engaging in mystery Ay. brothers and sisters those who don't know the mysteries of the kingdom are the ones who remain you enter a place to start a ministry nobody knows you you are a young minister find the greatest ministry there orthodox or pentecostal quietly go and worship with them whether you believe what they are saying or not sit down under that atmosphere when you worship with them try to see if you can gain access to the man of god if you cannot put a small seed and so that atmosphere must open for your ministry because you are tapping into a grace you go to minister somewhere and there is a man of god with an unction higher than you recognize and honor him don't enter there and just say well we are all here and uh, i hear this person is around don't be stupid many young people do that and their heavens are closed and for that ministration they struggle you enter there are elderly people you appreciate them you are a small boy or small girl that god gave grace don't ignore them i appreciate everybody here and you find out boom your heaven is open but you go there arrogantly and you see people who are you may have more revelation than them it's not about revelation it's about status it's about a track record in the spirit are we getting blessed for every dimension you desire there is a mystery that controls it find out learn it find out it won't come as a gift it's a by the truth it will cost you you found out that nothing is working financially in your life don't say that's how every young man is it's a lie let me tell you the truth there are people look at me i say it with all humility there are people who have conquered poverty and lack forever it will never return till jesus comes make no mistakes of believing that everybody is struggling don't take people's humility for granted to think they are struggling there are people who left the realm of financial struggle since you tap into it listen to the materials
don't sit down and say I'm, we are all young people we are not, I'm not talking of job listen do you know many people in the kingdom don't prosper God's way very few people in the kingdom prosper God's way so when they hear people like us talking like this they think we are just talking nonsense there is a way God grants you prosperity that no devil no gate of hell will turn it around not up today down tomorrow you are up and you have gone never to return back again may that be your testimony but do you know the key you want to start a church please help the people shouting outside you want to start a church you don't know the key to leadership there is an exceptional leader somewhere learn the mysteries we're going to rise up to pray shortly i thought i'll be able to just um take the last part but then even if we stop here that's all right access to light the mysteries of the kingdom the secrets of champions there are people who taught certain things in the spirit and receive certain strange results here on earth strange results i have seen people with a grace nothing finishes in their hands they may not like promise was saying when he was raising the offering they may not be able to give you 100 million now but you will never come to their house remember what i was sharing last week a woman you see one mama selling akara with that akara she can bring out hundred thousand and give you you are doing three jobs hundred hundred thousand yet your money finishes there is a grace listen the final thing i'll talk about very quickly is tapping into certain dimensions of grace some things cannot be taught they are received but it's not just general anointing holy spirit come <clears throat> is locating people who are carriers of these dimensions it must be working for somebody close to you have the humility to see it a gentleman met me some time ago and he said he wanted to buy a car i said really i said so what are you doing about it and he said he's saving i laughed i said that means you are not going to buy a car forever till jesus comes you see a young man and ask him you want to buy a land Say, so what are you doing? He said, I'm, I'm planning. Uh, for now, I have 100,000. You don't buy land by saving. You buy land through favor. Whatever God gives you is not what you keep to buy land. It's what you engage correctly with that brings you to that level. Now, many mainstream people, again, are going to insult me for this thing. And don't forget all those stupid preachers because they collect land and money from people. But I tell you this, with the integrity of God, psalm 45 44 verse 3 give us psalm 44 verse 3 let me show you how to acquire if god wants to give you grace god wants to give you land this is how it comes read if you're a christian want to read by their own sword uh-huh neither did their own arm save them but thy right hand and thy arm the light of thy countenance because thou hast a favor this is how it happens this is how it happens there are graces you must tap into you don't have by default the baptism of the holy spirit will not bring those graces for you when you have revelation Part of the things that revelation will give you is the ability to discern. Dr. Mike Mudo calls it wisdom. The ability to discern difference. Ah, I've been a roommate with promise. And I've noticed that my job pays more than his job. But he's happier, healthier with a lot of money. It's in my presence. I watch people bringing favor. It's a sign that there is a grace operating. Let me tell you something. It may be your husband. It may be your wife. It will not jump on them just because it's your wife or husband you must consciously tap into it are we together now if if um come Marcelina, if Marcelina has a grace for supernatural favor i can stand as an arrogant man of god preaching with no favor but through knowledge i want to be fruitful remember i want results i'm talking of extraordinary fruitfulness I will discern how do you discern observation 
observation of recurrent results in people's lives are a sign that there is the finger of God a woman has four five six children all of them are responsible and you know that it's not that the parents could train them well there is a grace you are about to get married as a young couple go and meet them kneel down help her make pepper soup do whatever you do mommy bless us you say ah no don't worry my children don't allow all that greeting to distract you kneel down and remain there till that hand comes on your head and you you can sow into her life you can say Marcelina sorry let me just help you and worship you. ah no I wouldn't do this you are a great woman of God no. no even if you are the person that got that person born again with respect to what you want to receive you are the lesser so you must humble yourself to receive are we together and you tap into that grace and that man to lands on your head you start producing extraordinary results I'm like a fisherman I know graces that are needed and where they are found and when I when I'm pursuing a grace I'm not embarrassed that's what took me to Canaan land to go and meet Bishop Oyedepo that's what took me to Joss to go and meet Renard Bonke you you fish unashamedly you don't receive impartation from colleagues promise promise we are we are uh, I remember when we were in secondary school can you bless me I'm seeing something working in your life What's it? can you imagine can you imagine what he's doing <laughs> hallelujah I didn't realize what he was doing praise God there are people who are very foolish some of you your parents are carrying the grace that you need for your next level but you have not discerned it you pass them every time mommy I'm going for fellowship may God help you and she keeps wondering when she was your age 20 men were looking for her you are almost twice her age nobody is coming tap tap into it somebody who lives in your neighborhood all he has is primary school certificate yet in your presence you are you are joining others to say his money is is charm because naysayers always find explanations once they see someone blessed they have to find something and say that thing here eh, you see it eh, jimmy just leave that guy that guy is a uh, is a there is a spirit don't see every young man who is blessed and just think there, there are spirits all around this is the end time be careful be careful don't allow cynical people rob you of your blessings when you find out that there is a grace it doesn't have to be from a high man of God some of you this night if you can turn and look at your roommate that you have been fighting with every day in the midst of that fight there is a grace tap into it be the one to cook the food tomorrow what's the occasion I noticed three of you in this room there is the hand of God on your life sir I notice there is no week that passes without you being favored I want to tap into you may not have money you have polish you can polish his shoe you don't have money you have soap you can wash find one socks whether it's clean or not soak it again and wash it Lord this I'm washing every nonsense out of my life results results your father may be a harsh man your mother may be a harsh man but you have never seen them beg for bread there are results in that area look away from the imperfections some of you your pastors may not have the revelations you have you even have higher revelations than them don't worry there is something they carry there are people no matter where they go to in less than three weeks somebody must find them and favor them they have this grace for territory send them to the valley of the shadow of death before they land there an angel will be waiting there look for them and bless them so is it there are many people who want crowds look for mission agencies around there are mission agencies there are orphanages you want God to make your children correct that their brains will be working well find an orphanage buy one bag of rice drag it there and meet them 
the children may not tell you thank you they may not even recognize you you are not doing it just for that tap into it. i'm showing you how i live my life you engage mysteries and come back home and start dancing and rejoicing it's like a charm that has called all the blessings they start following you and bulldoze any mountain standing by themselves the principles will fight their way to bring the result to your life listen if you are here and you are looking for a job and you don't have a job start engaging mysteries now otherwise you will never get one please hear me are we together especially for brothers i'm waiting for a job you will wait forever engage mysteries if you don't know ask questions you want to start to start a business all you have is capital and a brain you are going to lose let me advise you don't even waste your time to start there are spiritual things we engage go and listen to my message spiritual intelligence settle things from the realm of the spirit before you start anytime you are in trouble don't start running to meet people physically settle it in the secret place you are in trouble the landlord is about to come and throw you out there is trouble your parents are going to court leave all those those things are shadows enter the secret place and correct it if it's something you need to invoke mercy invoke the mercy of god i've taught you about the mercy of god the mercy of god will turn is is god's divine partiality you should hang in the cross everybody knows you engage that mystery things turn around in a way that will surprise you hallelujah you see students here those who are students they will write exams they will not answer the questions but engage the right mysteries they come out from the exam cgpa 4.8 cgpa 4.7 you think these things are just guesswork no you engage mysteries we're going to pray our time is gone but i want you to cry for fruitfulness and i want you to cry for discernment discernment to know how to tap into graces don't sit down and be barren i've taught you brokenness i've taught you humility i've taught you trust i've taught you revelation you must come around the knowledge of the mysteries and then i've taught you how to search for anointings and graces that will fast track your life rise up on your feet and cry passionately before the god of heaven Pray. Hallelujah. Just three quick prayer points. Prayer point number one. Lord supernatural supply of grace to trust you i will never doubt you again whether i understand what you are doing or not i banish complaint from my life i banish grumbling from my life lift your voice and pray supernatural grace to trust pray Grace to trust you. Grace to trust you. Grace to trust you. She na malada manana bos. Le na na masi na na. She na na na. She na na masi braga na malana malana na na mana. I want to be extraordinarily fruitful, exceedingly fruitful. Shabrakata koso do paka shabrakata malana ba. Hallelujah. Prayer point number two. Lord, the mysteries I need to know in this season for the next level of my results. Show me. Give me encounters. Lift your voice and start crying. Lift your voice and start crying to God. Shabrakata, 
Shere basa na 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 basa na na na. Show me, show me. Open my eyes. Make a parado kapraska dabala kaya. Open down my eyes that I may behold wondrous things out of your law. Show me the mysteries of wealth. Show me the mysteries of increase. Show me the mysteries of fruitfulness. The mysteries of restoration. The mysteries of peace. Show me the key, O oh God, to making things work in my life. The Lord has just healed a lady of a breast lump. You have a lump in your left breast. Check it right now. Check it right now. Check it and come out right now. Right now. I don't know why God is just interrupting. Please check it. Check it. Check it right now. In fact, I see three people. Check it. This is a family. Please, we are not playing games. Inside and outside. I'm seeing three ladies who came with like a lump on their breast check it right now that devil has gone back to hell please check it quickly and come out if they are under the anointing when they when they are all right let them come out very quickly let them come out quickly augustina augustina i'm hearing a name like augustina augustina there's someone like that you can just make your way to the front quickly Augustina the Lord is judging evil in your family this is oppression this is what I'm seeing oppression as it's happening to you there's somebody outside this same anointing is touching the person outside the second overflow, the anointing of the Spirit is touching somebody outside. The Lord is bringing judgment to wickedness because I'm seeing that this is something that has to do with witchcraft. It has tied your life and your family down and the Lord is telling me, release Augustina. Release Augustina. Release Augustina. Release Augustina. And as it's happening to you, it's also happening to that other lady in the name of Jesus I release you right now from every chain that has held you be released your family be released it's time for you to testify I release both of you prophetically in the name of Jesus Christ every door the devil has tied let it be opened by the anointing of the Spirit in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ hallelujah hallelujah I'm seeing a whole family that came there is a family God wants me to minister to you are five five people I don't know if there is a mother I'm seeing a family with five people who came from somewhere and the Lord wants me to minister to them you are five in all you're five in all please when you identify them they can come up so that we will just minister to them very quickly hallelujah for God so loved the world for God so loved the world and the Bible says that he proved that love by giving his only begotten son. Please listen. Don't worry about what is happening. Just let me have your attention, please. He says he gave his only begotten son. This, we can take it from there. That, that statement, he gave his only begotten son. Is the summation of the substitutionary sacrifice of Christ are we together now
please help her wrap her i command that spirit to leave her right now now and never return in the name of jesus release her family release i see a lot of money being tied release it now as you go in the name of jesus the christ hallelujah so the bible says he gave his only begotten son hallelujah for god so loved the world the word there is cosmos the social system that has to do with people listen please and has to do with the entire territory the social system he says for god so loved the world and he proved that love listen listen because love must be manifested to be appreciated are we together now and the bible says that he gave his only begotten son and please don't be confused there is a name that son is called jesus because there are many people who can preach to be the begotten of the father but the only begotten son who after his resurrection now became the first begotten right until the resurrection of man he was the only begotten please listen you see everything about this bible was pointing to this very revelation the revelation of jesus christ everything the book of revelation says the revelation of jesus christ not the revelation of a formula or a principle so the law the prophet abraham samson isaac judges everything was tracing to the genealogy of jesus christ and then the bible says that he manifested himself before people and he was full of grace and truth listen jesus came with a message and his message was very simple he said repent the word repent is not the word turn from your sins no preachers preach that as a result of lack of understanding the word repent is an indication of completely turning from a direction to another please just be patient with me this family or minister are we together now turning from one direction to the other but the first step to that turning is acknowledging a person his sacrifice and his government that's the first step and then you begin to walk in accordance to his principles only when you do that are you said to have repented many people have not repented they want to repent they think they have repented they hope they are repenting the first message that was preached after the resurrection of christ he said men and brethren what shall we do and this is what the apostle said for the remission of your sins so the bible says he gave his only begotten son you laid aside your majesty gave up everything for me suffered at the hands of those you have created you took all of my when you died and rose again now today in heaven if you know it just sing it with me i really want to worship you my lord you have won my heart and i am yours forever and ever i will love
like you give your ATM for someone to use and withdraw money. He gave, he donated. And Jesus came upon the earth and he began to do many great things. Listen, Jesus did not just come, please, I want you to pay attention. It's going to be very brief and we'll begin to pray. Jesus did not just come to show us how God looked alone. He came to show us how we should look. So when he walked upon the earth, he was the prototype of God's idea of the man he had created. He was invincible. The Bible records. Above situations, above circumstance, with unlimited power, yet a man of extreme self-control. He knew when to speak and he knew when to keep quiet. There would be so many sick people, like the ten lepers. He would heal one and just walk away. Because his desire was not to show power. His desire was to do the will of the Father. He was more interested in bringing satisfaction to his Father than building a ministry. People tried to say, look, build a ministry. And he said, no, 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 no. I can of my own do nothing as I see my father do. So he came to show us the prototype of the true Christian life. A life that is completely yielded to the will of the father. Void of self-ambition. Void of a desire for vain glory and personal gratification outside of Christ. A life that is crucified. Are we together now? And then the Bible begins to describe to us that which happened today many years ago. We know it as the passion of the Christ. It started from the communion where they came into him by covenant so that they would authorize him. John chapter 6 says, except you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you cannot be part of me. You cannot have my life. So while they were taking the communion, they were giving him access to carry the sin of man upon himself. And then the Bible says he went to Gethsemane and there he cried. He prayed until tears were like drops of blood. Afterwards, he was ready to be crucified. And brothers and sisters, I know that we celebrate Easter. Today is Good Friday. Pain is what made today good. Are we together? Sacrifice is what made today good. If he refused to lay down his life. Listen, when Pilate looked at him and said, don't you know I have the power to free you? He said, ah, 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 ah. He said no man has this power except it is given unto him by my father. He said, I have the power to lay it down and the power to pick it up again. In other words, I was not coerced. My love for you made me to sacrifice my life, my reputation, and everything. We talk a lot about Good Friday, but we never know what made it good. This is what made it good. That a man gave his son, then the son gave his life. Are we together now? It's one thing to give your child. It's another thing for the child to agree. He can refuse. Jesus had the right to refuse in fact he was tempted to negotiate it he said father if it be possible you are the all wise God there is another way you can do this thing but then he remembered nevertheless I told you the hallmark of sonship is servanthood the true proof that you are a son is that you can give up sonship to become a servant are we together now the father gave Jesus Jesus gave his life and don't be confused he gave his blood he gave his righteousness are we together now he gave up his position and when he was doing that he had you in mind listen listen he never went to the cross because of anything he did of himself the Bible says he was a man touched with the feelings of our infirmity yet without sin but he took your place because the bible says we all like sheep 
have gone astray. Right? He said, every man has gone his own way. With our ideas about God, our ideas about success. Would you give our mother a chair, please? Let her just sit down. I'll minister to you in a moment, please. At least let her just sit down. Hallelujah. Well, all of you, you can sit down. I'll call you now. They are all looking at me. Um, sit down. Especially this, my friend. Friend, how are you? What's his name? Aaron. Kelvin. Just get somewhere. For, they can sit around. And I will attend to you now. Just five minutes. Let me establish what. Hallelujah. So, please come, sir. I offend a government and they are about to destroy me listen please about to destroy me and the bible testifies that i have no power in myself and then someone comes and while i'm on my way to destruction he interrupts and he says i love you too much to let you keep gambling and trying your way this is what i want you to do stand back and watch me pay the price and while he was on the way while they were flogging him in his mind he was saying mankind i hope you are watching this would have been you i hope you are watching i hope you are watching the scars as he began to bleed he said i hope you are watching see if two people come and they tell you they love you the best answer to give those two people is I'm watching. Because love is a verb. Are we together now? I am what? All kinds of things have told you they love you. But they left you. But Jesus said, watch my love. I'm not going to make noise about it. First stand back. And while they flogged him, he said, if it's for you, I will still go the extra mile. And they flogged him. The father gave him. He gave his health. The father gave him. He gave his prosperity. The father gave him. When we say his life. Let's break it down. What, what is in his life that he gave? Because that's what he gave you. What was in the life of Jesus? The ability to reign and rise above sickness and diseases. The father gave him. He gave it away in exchange. The Bible says he was rich, but he gave it. Are we together now? He had a reputation of dominion, but he laid it aside. I hope you know that they stripped him naked. The covering you see around is just for social reasons when you are watching movies. A 33-year-old man, naked. Children watched him. Adults watched him. People mocked at him and said, you claim to be a king. And he said, this is all for you. Are we together? Blood dripping out from every part of his body. Every time he was tempted to give up. He said, no, if I give up, where I stop is where you must continue. And I know that even if it was for the last nail, you still would not be able to take it. See, listen. If you think what happened on the cross is what Jesus just died for, physically, you will be deceived. Because there are human beings who have been crucified. What he stopped you from was not the physical activity. It was what was happening in the spirit. You can do the physical one, I guarantee you. People have been crucified. But you don't know what that meant in the spirit. A lot was interplaying in the spirit while that was happening. He became Adam from Gethsemane. From Gethsemane to the cross, he was no longer the Christ. He was Jesus, Adam, the very man of sin. Mortality came upon him. Please listen. And the father kept watching. He had given him and he knew that it is more blessed to give than to receive. So there was no negotiation about receiving. The blessing was that he would bring many sons into glory. Are we together now? When they took him to that cross and they nailed him, as his blood began to drip upon the earth, and in that excruciating pain, 
It was a way of torturing criminals. He was not just looking at Mary and John. He was looking at you. He was looking at me. He was looking at every witchcraft in our family and every ordinance of darkness. And he said, if it's for you, I will do it. But he made a very interesting statement we are going to establish tonight. Three words that represented victory. It is finished. Oh, hallelujah. I didn't study English. But I know that when a man says, it is finished. It is finished. Is a reality that is present and continuous forever. Not it was finished. You would have said the condition for it finishing has changed. So we have to start another one. It is finished. The question is, what is the it that has been finished? First, that inability to access the Father. We call it lack of righteousness. He said that error is finished. That, 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 that Christianity that has to do with ceremonial cleansings, having to atone for your sins by your own strength, I brought it to an end. That ability of saying qualify and come to God, he said it is finished. You now will come through my own invitation, my own access. Like I organize a program and I invite someone and while you are about to drive him, I say, no, 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 that's my guest. Come. But you are not only his guest, he also made you the one to be celebrated. Please listen. There is a dimension of this we have not learned and this is what I want to teach us. When Jesus went to hell and met Satan, a discussion transpired. And Satan said, remember Adam. And he said, I don't remember Adam. I am him. Don't you see? This is Adam. And Satan knew it was true. Because only Adam had the right to collect the key. No other man could collect the key. And so he went as the second Adam. And said, you killed Adam. And every man that came from him. Let me have the keys. Revelations 1 verse 1. When you read down what? I am he that was dead. But now I am alive and I hold the keys. He collected the keys. Listen. Access to the earth. Access to dominion. Access to God's life. That's the most important part. The life of God. I'm going to explain it. When he resurrected. Watch this. Did you know that if he just started walking and doing all of the things he did, man would not be able to partake of it because he had not ascended to heaven. It would just be that he was victorious. And then the Bible says, according to the book of Hebrews, that he went to heaven as the high priest, the lamb, the sacrifice, as everything. And then he took his blood, poured it upon that tabernacle and said, Father, you are just for seeing that man does not have access to divine health and all of this because you are a just God. Your throne is founded upon righteousness and justice. The Bible says they are the foundations, meaning there's no negotiation that will bend it. But now he says, every time you think justice, let mercy begin to speak. Watch this. I really want you to get a revelation of this. It will change your life. Every time the voice of judgment, the voice of mess or of, of justice begins to speak, I will not fight it. But remember that I not only paid the price, I paid the price for everybody who will be an offender on this path. Are we together now? When that happened, a coronation happened in heaven we see that coronation the psalmist gave us a revelation and from philippians chapter 2 the bible says a name an office an identity was given to him in heaven to sit upon that throne are we together now and the bible says anything that has to do with man's redemption 
man's vindication must pass through him meaning a man is only condemned when he condemns that man a man is only justified when he justified the father put it in his office are we together watch what he did when he sat down on that throne he told man there is another dimension you do not know i know that i paid the price for you but i want to teach you another dimension we paid it in covenant listen you did not participate in anything but out of my love i took you and made it as though in me you were the one who paid that price so not only did he die for you you died in him are we together now so in christ every man's iniquity every man's um basis for accusation was nailed in christ paul saw this in galatians 2 20 and he said i have been crucified with christ nevertheless he said i live yet not i but christ is an exchange he died for me now i live in him in other words the day jesus christ dies there is no reason why i should be alive because we're in him so my life is no longer something i get outside of him my life is an overflow of what i have received from him and he so designed that from that point hence listen everything i derive will be because of him in him and with him my joy is because of him my prosperity is because of him please listen my peace is because of him so at no point in this kingdom would i be found leaning on my own strength because the moment i lean on my own strength the judgment of the law catches up with me the only basis for vindication is to be in him this is what he said he says he that abides in me and i abide in him he said the same will bear much fruit he said for without me the word without means outside of me and everything that i have done ye can do nothing the basis of the believer's victory is what christ did on the cross but not just what christ did on the cross because that's what a lot of people say oh i know what he did no let's continue john 3 verse 16 please give it to us so that we can finish up it's not enough to know what jesus did that's not where i'm going tonight this is the part that concerns you that whosoever believes believes what no 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 it didn't say that whosoever believes anything there is a specific thing you have to believe to have life you can believe jesus is a prophet it never gives life you can believe jesus is a healer it doesn't give life are we together he says believe in him who is the him who is the him no you see you see where we miss it we have been believing in rubbish who is the him who he said god no believing in god doesn't give you life who is the him that's where i want us to get to tonight you, you see that our confusion is the reason why we cannot manifest the reality of god's life we believe but what do you believe are we together you can believe the shepherd believe me you will not be saved believing in the shepherd does not bring salvation are we together believe in him who is him the bible i love the way the bible puts it as many as believed in him 
See that. Brothers and sisters, I am many things. And all of those dimensions can give you different operations of me. Are we together? A child believes a father. A worker believes a CEO. A Jimmy's daughter believes in her father. She doesn't believe in a CEO. We believe in a Jimmy Adekbe. The multi-millionaire. That's what you believe. You will never get fatherly love from that dimension. Are we together now? You may get financial advice. You may get intelligence. You may get all of this. I believe in Professor Femi. You will get the intellectual dimension. There is a dimension of God you must believe to have life. Many of us have believed him as a healer. You can be healed and still go to hell. Please hear me. Many of us have believed him as a savior. You can have, I mean, you can have, a, um, what do we call it, uh, as a shepherd. What dimension of him have you believed? I will tell you now. Ready? There is a dimension of him you must believe to be saved. Whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. What is Lord? The word Lord means a conqueror. Are we together now? Listen please. It's not just a savior like the one who died. He didn't resurrect as a savior. He died as a savior. He did not resurrect as a savior. He resurrected as Lord. A winner. A champion. One qualified to transfer what he has. And the Bible says whoever believed that. Listen. Whoever believes in him, that name that was given, he said he shall not perish. The word perish there is not the word go to hell. Are we together? Because the Bible says whoever does not believe is already condemned. Shall not perish. Here it is. But have money. But have. The word everlasting is a wrong interpretation. Everybody has everlasting life. Everlasting life is life that does not end. Your, your life does not end. You only change location to continue the living. That's why we never say, will you spend eternity? You must spend it. The question is where? Are we together now? Thank you. Don't mind this, my funny friend. Where will you spend eternity? Not will you spend. You must spend it. The word eternal life there is the word divine life is the greek word zoe i know you've heard it many of us quote it but just listen the word zoe listen let me describe it for you it's a life that does not one depend on any external input for its sustenance it's a life that has the capacity to reproduce anything it needs within itself are we together now like you do not have to source for anything within that system is self-sufficiency within that system is the ability to be any and everything that life can become health that life can become victory that life can become wisdom so when the bible says we have life it doesn't mean we just have a new way of breathing in and out no something came upon you that all of a sudden translates you please i want you to believe this the bible says the focus in the whole story is the believing part whoever believes in him the lord who was a savior became a conqueror now sits as a king the father gave the son the son gave his life your job is to receive that life when you receive that life in reality the bible says certain things will begin to change you see the life is a programming the moment it enters you it deconstructs itself to different dimensions please listen the life of god is not just a big thing that comes up no 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 it is the life that begins to open you up to the mysteries of the kingdom it is the life you have received 
that begins to immune you from the activities of darkness many people have not received this life they want healing but they have rejected the life of god many people have come out for altar call father i i am I'm, I'm born again i believe in you this and that but they have not received it he said as many as received brothers and sisters you can reject it many seated here have rejected it i give you my atm card you refuse to collect it you can reject it yet you need what only my atm card will give you you can borrow money from pastor lawrence borrow money from uh, a promise and so on and so forth and i say take my atm card the point is you don't just take it and hold it when you take the card something will make you turn behind and begin to read and follow you see the life of god is not how do i put it now it's not like something you just put in your pocket all right look at this i have this handkerchief so we say i have the life of god do you have it yes no that's not the idea of the life of god the idea of the life of God is like a programming. Something enters you and begins to walk in you. It is God who is at work in us to will and to do. So it's working. The moment the life enters you, it's like a genetic mutation. It starts altering your configuration. Are we together now? And the Holy Spirit is the custodian of that life. When he comes, he begins to open you up to the realities of the kingdom all of a sudden listen because of that life you are now spiritually alive you can have the sensitivity to know that life was not supposed to be like this why am i always failing you will never just know that ordinarily it takes that life to open that awareness in you are we together now it's like glasses you all of a sudden start seeing life from another perspective no I'm not supposed to fail like this. I can't, I can't just be taking it like that again. Something must change. No, I've seen a trend in my family. People don't get married till they are 45. I'm noticing that something in my external environment is fighting the reality of that life. And the Bible says, he who has the son has eternal life. Zoe god's kind of life now watch this although you have that life it takes the ministry of the holy spirit please listen to open you up to the operation of that life so that you can receive the fullness of the benefits of that life this is where a lot of people miss it oh i have life i have life the same way you say i have a car the same way you say, I have an ATM card. Can you use it? I have given it to you. Do you know how to activate the operation of that life? Do you know how to make that life work in you? We have been taught that it works automatically. No, sir. No, sir. You can claim to have the life and still die of sickness. Now, this is where Satan's ministry comes. The thief cometh not but to steal to kill if you don't have anything he doesn't come to steal are we together now satan comes his first ministry is deception what is deception painting an untrue picture and convincing you to believe it so you believe that i do not have this life if i truly had this life i should not be sick are we together now if i have this life I should be doing exploits academically if i have this life now listen here is where the confusion has come in the body of christ there are those who are saying you have this life there are those who are saying you don't have this life you better fight your way into receiving it both of them are incomplete on one side you are seeing the suppose by faith you believe you know you acknowledge that that life is in you but then you are not seeing the difference the Bible said should be produced. Are we together now? This is the dilemma of many Christians. I gave my life to Christ from the day I got born again. My life has not changed. It's been 10 years. I will tell you why. Eternal life is being frustrated within you. Because you have not been taught how to release and activate the operation of the content 
of that life it's like buying a phone you admire it you look at it but you do not know how to work with it that was the lamentation of the psalmist in psalm 82 from verse 5 he says they know not not they have not they know not neither will they understand he said they grow in darkness and so the foundations of the earth are out of course the next verse says have i not said ye are god and all of you are children of the most high he says but you shall what die like men men listen please listen an heir as long as he is a child does what the bible starts by calling him what an heir a partaker of an inheritance a partaker of a reality but it says as long as he's a child the word child here is devoid of strategy devoid of the ability to understand the operation of that process he said he differed not from a slave i can receive the life of god that contains health vitality prosperity and still be under a cause i tell you hear me brothers and sisters because we misunderstand the prophetic dimension of god's word therefore if any man be in christ he is a new creation but we do not know that the communications of god are twofold there is the prophetic communication of god speakings according to his realm of existence but there is the experiential manifestation of that prophetic word it is the nature of god to call things as though they already appear are we together now hebrews chapter 2 he put it very beautifully he said god had put all things under the subjection of man he said god did not leave anything left but he said as it is now we do not yet see all things are we together now so you have come to answer the altar call the life is in you but you went back and the exact same thing you know happens when a man is under a curse is happening to you now you went to a pastor and said pastor you said if i'm born again this thing will leave but you the person said yes is it not in your bible we all read it together now you are born again brothers and sisters but the truth is if you will be sincere you are still seeing those traces as if nothing happened to you so it puts believers in a dilemma there are those who are saying keep believing that is gone one day it will go hey wonder shall never end if you have that kind of ideology you are in for trouble and then on the other hand there are those who act as though they really have nothing so they are trying they live per day we survive today let's see how the war of tomorrow will be I know that there will be all kinds of things are we together now so although they read that there is victory in christ the truth is they don't believe it they just know let's fight per day they are the ones who suspect everybody and everything if sam looks at you like this is a sign that is an enemy so they live their life with the consciousness of an aberrated perspective of warfare and by warfare they mean a consistent never-ending contention both are wrong are we together this is prophecy but there is a place for the manifestation of prophecy Jesus Christ has done everything he needs to do but I have a role to play nobody gets saved just because Jesus died you will go to hell there is a response please listen the idea of grace does not mean not participating no the idea of not participating in a process to call it grace is an aberration are we together uh-huh the difference between grace and the law is what kind of participation there is a participation that is unto the flesh there is a participation that is a response of faith that is the participation that brings results are we together now so if the bible says by tithing you open your heavens when i'm tithing 
I'm not acting under the law. I'm not trying to do something. I am responding. There is a difference between doing something to gain righteousness. But in any case, there must be reception by faith. And that in itself is a participation. This looks very simple, but it's at the foundation of the lack of results and the miracles that many people are, are not receiving. I don't want us to waste this night and just get up and see people fall under the anointing and celebrate miracles and go back. I want you to live victorious. If all you think is healing, you will be frustrated. If all you think is on my think God's life and all its content is away. The life of God that can become any and everything. Any and everything. Christ has been made unto me through his life wisdom. He's been made unto me strength. He's been made unto me prosperity. That life is the word and as the word opens up it shows me the dimensions of its operation and then i look out first to believe number two to respond everybody say believe say respond this is your part as a believer you when you respond to what you do not believe is a waste of time so the Bible says, whoever believes in him, you receive. But that life begins to teach you certain things. And you respond to those teachings. Please listen to me. Part of what that life teaches you is that Satan is a trickster. He's a deceptive person. And he will not, just because you have life, leave you. The Bible says he left Jesus for a season. The next time he would come, he didn't come directly again. He came through Peter and Jesus said, I still detect you. And the devil says, do not, I mean, God said, do not be unaware, speaking through the apostle, of the devil's strategy. Are we listening to me, please? Because many people get up bragging, I'm not under any curse, I'm not under this. Christ has redeemed me from the curse of the Lord. That's not a lie. But you have not learned how to participate in response to make that an experiential reality so you will still brag around and die like mere men are we together now i really believe in jesus christ and i really believe in his word but i also believe in the principles that the revelation of his life releases and my obsession is to always find out where is my part in this brothers and sisters there is a part there is a part that you have to play believing is not enough believing talks of conviction persuasion about the truth of a person or a statement but there must be a response your response is your action of faith so the bible says this in the book of hebrews there remained a rest a sabbath for the people of god in spite of what christ has done there still remains a rest and then he says let us therefore labor this is paul in the new testament what is the idea of labor push god aside no let us find out our place of response let us therefore understand the operations of the kingdom so that we will know where our place of alignment is and he says whoever labors like that there is a guarantee he will enter his rest there is a way you will align that sickness will run away from your body believe me it's not just by claiming you will claim and be shocked there is a way you respond remember during our time of fasting we're showing you different mysteries these are all the components that are called the life of god right he gave you life but it takes faith and it takes an operation of the spirit 
So Satan has kept many people bound for two main reasons. One, they have rejected the life. And the solution to that is an altar call. I'm going to do that shortly before we start ministering. The second is he has kept people in delusion and ignorance. Never trivialize the role of deception in a man's destruction. Deception. The first deception is that you don't need to do anything again. Oh, brothers and sisters, hear me. I fear God. It's a big deception. As free as salvation claims to be, if you do not respond, you are going to hell. There is always a participation. That's what we call koinonia. Everybody say participation. If you will ever enjoy the healing dimension of God's life, there is a participation. If there will ever be prosperity, there is a participation. Now, the participation is a response of faith. God credits it at the response of faith, not an addition to what he has done. It's a compliment. So, he would see a sick body and say, your faith, you believe I am able to heal you. You were convinced based on the report you had. And now, I gave you an instruction, waiting for your participation. You got up, your faith, he calls it your faith. So, what is your faith? Faith is the name given to the action you take based on your conviction of God's word. Believing is not faith. No, 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 no. Believing is the first step to faith. You can believe without having faith. A believer is not a possessor. A believer who responds is a possessor. There are so many people, listen to me, who are trusting God for all kinds of things here. I'm teaching you how to get results tonight. God is not a herbalist. There is a participation. Ejimi, this is a gift for you. What is he supposed to do? Watch this, his response. Now, his standing up is a sign that he believes me. I can choose to hide it. Please sit down, sir. Sorry I'm using you. Hope, I'm sorry I'm just doing this game with your husband. Hallelujah. Ejimi, do you believe I'm having a phone? And that phone is for you. If you believe it, walk up to me. Faith. This is faith. The walking to me, although he has not seen it. So he's putting my integrity to the line. It's up to me to prove that I'm not lying. So I bring it out. If he comes to me, listen. If he comes to me and I say, ah, I'm playing. He believed. I'm the one who is a liar. And the Bible said, God looked for anybody who is greater than him. So that he will show you he's not playing games. Are we together now? Let's look at one scripture. Thank you, sir. Romans chapter 8, please. Romans chapter 8. Let's look at verse 35. Romans 8, 35. Just that one scripture. And then we'll take an altar call. And begin to minister. Romans chapter 8. 35. Okay, give us from verse uh, 32. 32. Thank you. Everyone, please read. If you are a Christian, if you are a child of God, this is Good Friday. Well, even if you are not a child of God, read. I will soon make an altar call. One, two, read. He that spared not stop who is the he now god is trying to make a statement and is tying the certainty of that statement to something he had done before it's like saying he that built this bridge in kaduna and built it excellently is about to build something so in case you doubt what i'm about to do find out whether i did that thing or not he's about to make a statement and he's saying don't you dare doubt me for what i'm about to say he that did not spare his what own son but delivered him up for who what's the next statement how shall he not with him also freely give us what this is god speaking he said look at me your healing is a lesser thing i gave jesus 
what is healing i gave jesus what is witchcraft if i did not if i spared my son then you will know that there are some things i can spare but i carried my son i gave him and now i have gathered you to give you healing and you are asking god this my this have been bleeding for six months non-stop and god said if i spared not jesus i will not spare anything whatever it would take me to prove myself i will do it if it means me killing somebody i will do it i i gave my son who will i not be able to kill listen this is the basis for conviction so every time the devil is trying to say look 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 will that prophecy work just remember jesus jesus begged the father to have mercy the father refused so listen jesus said father reconsider the father said you are joking stay there and now god is saying i want to bless you and the devil is saying no and jesus is saying god is saying just believe me and watch how i will do anything it takes is there anything too hard for me to do i am that i am Is there anything too hard for me to do? I am that I am. Yeah. Is there anything too hard for me to do? I am that I am. Hallelujah. If the Father did not give Jesus it's like a man listen it's like a man who vowed to punish every offender and he saw his wife and the guy said I'm a just person and he punished his wife then somebody throws a and say oh guy you know we are Nigerians what do you think he's going to do you say that's my wife inside the gutter I'm a military man this is my wife I paid the price for six months to get a yes from her. She's in that gutter. I don't know the consequence of my action. If you think I'm going to forgive you, listen, if it took God refusing to even give Jesus a chance for negotiation for your sake, then I assure you, whatever else it is that is holding you must leave you this night. Hallelujah. Do you believe me? We are going to pray and say, Lord, help my own belief. That, listen, listen, listen. That spirit that makes me keep wondering, can God do it? Listen, don't, don't make that foolish statement tonight. I, I was praying on the, tonight, before I came here, I was praying on the invitation card for my neighbor's wedding. If you know the story behind that dear woman she shared it here all kinds of things when i met her the devil was almost destroying her life had fibroid that was almost big like the size of a baby she shared her testimony here supernaturally that devil of fibroid came out the way a woman gives birth it came out like that without surgery and people were saying ah can you marry time has gone time has gone nonsense i prayed for the card and to the shame of the devil we are dancing to the heavens on the 6th of may <laughs> hallelujah brothers and sisters your limitation is self-imposed satan is a deceiver he comes to you and says but can they really hear your voice we are going to pray the only prayer i want you to pray tonight is to challenge unbelief and say lord i lift my faith i'm ready to respond based on my conviction lift your voice and begin to pray i have a part to play I lift up that wall of unbelief. Please pray, pray. You are able.
Are you praying? sense the anointing of the spirit i'd like you to mention everything that must live tonight listen please just follow these instructions i told you your response is where your faith is there are things that should go don't just keep quiet and watch them the bible says speak to the mountain open your mouth and begin to mention them don't keep quiet Mountain of financial hardship, mountain of cancer, mountain of mediocrity. Second Oh, you must go, you must go. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Say after me tonight. In the name of Jesus. The faith of God is at work in me. I have the faith to receive. I have the faith to believe. I have the faith to respond please listen do you know what happened in Acts chapter 4 don't turn there the Bible says they went to a gate called beautiful please let me see now sir watch this it says they saw a man who had been there and he he, he called on them for arms and he thought they were going to give him arms Peter and John and he, they said silver and gold have i none he said but such as i have listen listen i give unto you what did he have he said in the name of jesus rise up and walk the man was there sit down he was nothing happened why response did he believe peter yes did he get a miracle no why he, he could not respond and the bible says when peter saw him he said who taught you faith he held his hand and said respond 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 and the bible says peter held his hand and he leaping stood the power of god is released at the point of response not before never before at the point of response when i began to minister here the lord was speaking to my spirit who gave me a guarantee that the power of god will move but as i began to speak I put pressure it's left for him now to defend whether he really spoke to me or not God will not just get up and act listen it was God that put this miracle service you're leaving your house to come is enough response already are you listening to me you're going to say Lord I put pressure on your integrity you ask us to come we have come lift your voice and pray don't be afraid of saying it pray Lord, you ask us to come. You are the one who anointed this meeting to be a miracle service. Now, oh God, we are here. Put pressure on his integrity. 
we have come oh god that you prove yourself shake it up we have come we have come hallelujah hallelujah now keep standing everybody before we continue there are people here i don't want you to waste your time and i don't want to waste your time there are people here inside and outside in all the overflows outside you are yet to make this decision the bible says this is the testimony that god has given us eternal life he said and that life is in his son he says he who has the son has that life please we're out of time we have very few minutes and there is a lot to do now wherever you are you are saying man of god i have heard your word i have been struggling with this thing but tonight i truly want to dedicate everything my all to jesus christ or you are saying man of god i have come out for an altar call before but for some reason honestly the pressures of life have pushed me and i need to make my way straight with the lord i'm tired of where i am those two categories of people inside and outside i want you to run like there's fire on the mountain and come out here right now God bless you quickly please i'll count just one to five if the holy ghost is speaking to you don't sit down thinking about it make your way very quickly one two run run like there's fire on the mountain especially those outside please you need to run run to jesus as you stand here please keep talking to him don't just stand looking at me God bless you. Run to Jesus. Oh, win that war. Win that war tonight. This is an issue of your destiny. Koinonia, can you appreciate them? This is a harvest for the King of Glory. You're saying, Lord, I'm tired of living my life my own way, mismanaging my life. On this Easter Friday, I give everything to you. Keep coming you are saying lord easter friday you died for god so loved me he died for me i'm tired of living a life that is not worthy of my calling there are still people outside please run and catch up quickly quickly as the holy ghost is speaking to you and say join them make your way quickly you're saying lord i'm tired tired of habits tired of addictions run to the cross Come running, come running, come running to the mercy seat. Keep coming. Hallelujah. All of you in front in one minute i'd like you to talk to jesus christ please no smiling and pitching one another this is a serious issue please pray open your mouth by yourself and say lord i i come to you genuinely the lord is ministering to me that there are three ladies outside who should join them you wanted to go and one of your friends stopped you please friend be careful don't stand against anybody's salvation this night make your way to the front please and join them i'm seeing three ladies outside that the lord is calling one of you your friend was trying to stop you the devil is a liar please make your way to the front and then there are two others god is speaking to join them quickly before we start praying those of you in front here talk to your maker no man condemns you the blood declares mercy said no help me i'm not gonna let you go i'm not gonna let you sleep away No man condemns you. The mercy, the mercy.
look at me all of you in front some of you are crying i don't care what you have done this one decision remember jesus every time the devil tries to condemn you are you not the drunkard tell him the drunkard is that guy on the cross something is about to happen to you right now oh yes oh you slept with somebody before coming here you say well i don't know what you are talking about but i've been crucified with christ he looked at the woman he said where are thine accusers he said neither do i condemn you go and sin no more lift your right hand and experience the power of the blood the power of mercy you just think there is a fountain filled with blood very softly as i pray for them hallelujah listen brothers and sisters jesus can change your life don't stand here just making an emotional decision to go back there is power in the blood of jesus say after me lord jesus from the depth of your heart say it again lord jesus i believe in you and this night i surrender everything my life my dreams my hopes my ambitions i surrender it to you i receive eternal life into my spirit i declare that from today i'm no longer a sinner i've been crucified with christ and i have his life right now jesus has paid the price i receive his life and i declare that i'm a new creation the old has gone i begin a new journey satan you no longer have any accusation against me i pray for you keep your hands lifted father on this good friday we present these souls as trophies to you this is a response to what jesus did oh receive these souls koinonia present these souls as trophies of victory trophies of victory this is the sacrifice the rewards of the sacrifice hallelujah i pray for you i declare that your sins are forgiven and the power of sin over your life is broken forever every guilt the devil uses i don't care what it is tonight the same way you wash a dirty clothes in fact the way you bring a new one that's how the pages of your life is he gives you a new beginning in the name of jesus christ hallelujah a big congratulations to you in the name of jesus now listen i want you to do this real fast so you join us i'm about to minister to people now and we're going to be very very fast hallelujah i like you to follow the gentleman there are people all around they will lead you outside we want your information please you are born again now christians don't tell lies make sure that you write your number you write your name just follow the instructions no fighting be patient until it gets to your turn they'll have your information and you quickly come back and join us in the service please do that as fast as possible so that um, you can participate fully in what is happening God bless you. Every other person begin to pray in the spirit. Rise up on your feet and begin to pray in the spirit. And say, Lord, my time for visitation is here. I won't give up. No, I won't give up. I'll keep pressing on till my answer comes. I won't give up. Lord, I won't give up. I'll keep holding on until my change comes. Lord, I won't give up. Lord, I won't give up. I'll keep holding on till my answer comes. I won't give up. 
Lord, I will give up. I'll keep pressing on until my change comes. Please write your prayer requests very quickly and submit them. Let's do it quickly, please. One minute, everybody. If you have the prayer request of, of I understand that Koinonia is being streamed live right now. Can we honor God for that? Yes. It's being streamed live. We appreciate the media for their creativity. And for all our online people, we love you. The same power that is working here is the same power that will work everywhere you are in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So please, quickly, quickly, please, your prayer request. Listen, for those of us who are just coming, I, I don't want you to think this is some ritual. Believe me, God answers prayers here. God gave us a revelation. Hallelujah. And the revelation was the revelation of Hezekiah. Hallelujah. When he took the threat letter and the Bible says he put it before the Lord and said, Lord, behold their threatenings. So please write it very quickly. And then ushers, let's be very fast. Please help some people with papers next time maybe from uh, maybe two or three months from now we'll try to create expectation cards so that you can expectation cards leave her john leave her whatever she wants you to just let her do hallelujah we're going to pray please quickly your loved ones Please make sure the online community participate. There's a God that answers prayers here. Remember we spoke about faith. Those outside, ushers help them. If I were you, I will begin to prophesy over my request. And say, I wrote you because you must live my life. Or you must come into my life. begin to pass your requests very quickly very quickly very quickly my goodness I tell you it's like a cloud that is heavy over this place that's why I'm saying we should hurry up we feel the rain of your love we see the wind of your spirit now the heartbeat of heaven let us hear See the rain of your love, feel the wind of your spirit. Now the heartbeat of heaven, let us hear. So let it rain, let it rain. Would you open the floodgates of heaven? pass the prayer request very quickly once we start we're just going to move um, let me encourage those who came with sick people or those who came for healing please make sure you get ready so that when it's time we'll just do that very very quickly hallelujah very quickly and then 
um, will be able to minister to people no matter what your condition is one of the things that we're going to be releasing today listen we had an encounter um we just returned from Ekiti state it's a lovely place and um, listen something really happened as they picked us from the airport in Elorin to Ekiti we passed a small village please listen a small village the border between Kwara state and Ekiti state and I saw one of the most miraculous things in my life I saw the obituaries of people listen 132 years 120 years it's like nobody died except they were 100 and something and in my mind i was saying guinness book of record has been lying to us for long and the, the interesting part of it listen is that the people they are not on glasses their dentitions are still exact they don't use crutches they are working firm one of them was a senior apostle that died last year 132 serving in the ministry alive and doing well when i saw those obituaries i said there must be a grace for longevity there, there is a covenant in this lineage that brings longevity and i told the guys i said when we're coming back we're stopping here you can trust me oh the law of honor as soon as we got there we stopped and we came out we went to the women they could not understand english please quickly with a request and we told them we said we are pastors we went to minister in equity and we are going back to the north but we discerned that there is a special anointing a strange grace for longevity and we want them to release upon us and then a lot of things happened that i may not say here and then they took us to one old man and the man just sat on his chair when we went they interpreted and they told him we came to receive that unction for longevity the man looked at us he said we should all kneel down and we got down on our knees and this guy began to pray and prophesy he's on record i'm sure maybe one of these days we'll play it he was in yoruba i didn't care what he was saying eh, Jimmy. all i know is that he was speaking a language and my spirit was receiving it this guy kept prophesying releasing that grace and that mantle upon that territory upon us i said that's right i knew that there's no mistake about this the moment we finished with him honored him so the seed into his life appreciated all the people we were on our way going back to the car and i felt in my spirit to go back and thank the women i went back to thank them and i saw a particular woman and they said this man 132 years this is his wife Ah. when they said that i said interpret for them that we came for and the woman looked at me they can bear me witness she just tapped me and said you follow her we followed her into a room she just opened the door and i saw pictures from one side to the other she started showing me the pictures i thought it was the wife of the man when he was in his old age you know like ketura that was the one and only woman he married that means that woman should be at least maybe 120 years or something alive these guys can bear me witness no glasses no crutches no nothing i said what kind of grace is this brothers and sisters there are mysteries you've heard me say this thing and when we finished before we finished talking we all got down on our knees and we told the woman she first started singing a song i don't know what it was i don't care what it was this woman spent like 10 minutes just letting it out from her spirit and do you know i was i don't know if i was sharing with them i felt as if they put a crown on my head that's how as i was feeling i knew i got this thing immediately she got it i told her i said let's snap i held her hands and we got to the place we'll show you the video and we snapped and i said i'm standing face to face with a woman 100 and something alive dentition complete can speak no glasses ah it was you i was thinking about i was happy to transport that grace brothers and sisters we brought it it must land on you tonight <laughs> hallelujah I, I was just looking i was looking to empty everything i had I said, what kind of grace is this 
we went to minister in a university called Afe Babalola University the man himself is 86 years alive and doing well in those regions if you are 80 years you are still a child believe me then when we were returning I saw the shock of my life 141 years one how many 41 I saw the obituary he just died 141 I said I got it let's see the devil that will manufacture himself from anywhere to come and take my life no see listen if you don't believe in transference of grace you will die young don't you ever think it was because of the food they are eating I didn't see any hospital around there I just saw a church and people is you can be 190 and not be able to talk but you are 141 the guy 132 was still serving as a man of God you are cooking by yourself and you died and left the wife the, the mama tapped me in this place once you are 60 years you hold crutches what cause is that I always believed it but now that I've seen it ah, there's that song that says my eyes have seen don't play it my eyes have seen it there are many strange things that will fall today listen if you care you can receive if you don't when we were coming we were in the plane and the plane was bouncing like a football I just remember that old woman I said Glenn you are joking I'm surrounded by too many mysteries please believe me hallelujah 86 years still a lecturer 89 years still a lecturer alive 100 and something years you see the women as if they are 50 something but some of them are in their 90s 80s hundreds that's grace brothers it's not about anybody praying for longevity there is an anointing that comes upon territories and tonight in the course of the meeting is when it's time to pray that please receive it we need to be alive to do a lot for the kingdom pray and say lord my spirit is open to receive everything you have for me Yes, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. I want to pray. Why do we do this all the time? We do this because there are spirits, listen, that stand in the way of people's destinies. Don't think that deliverance is just something we do mechanically. I'm about to pray because there are people who came here. There are those who represent families altars that have tied the destinies of men down i'm going to pray i tell you i sense a heavy anointing please the moment that happens i like you not don't just fall and stand up begin to pray and receive and reject everything that is not of god father your word says upon mount zion there shall be deliverance it says there shall be holiness and it said the sons of jacob shall receive their possessions therefore i pray every spirit every altar every manipulation of darkness that is responsible for the tragedy in any man's life inside the first overflow second and third as you shout jesus like fire let it begin to land on people right now one two three I command those spirits right now right now my goodness my goodness inside outside like fire is coming upon people is coming upon people is coming upon people hallelujah the Lord is giving me a very foolish instruction just lift your right hand that's what I hear right hand my goodness you don't need to shout just lift your right hand. Leave the drums. Just lift your right hand. This, 
don't mind me let me do my stupid thing the lord is giving me an instruction i see at least up to 33 people the lord is just saying i should stretch my hands the moment that happens i'm seeing like a stone being broken these are families altars in families lord according to your word right now at the count of three all the people and families involved i stretch my hands one two three let it happen right now right now right now right now right now just keep your right hand lifted shape baba kata altars 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 right now shake it 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 in the name of the lord jesus bring them out those strange altars strange altars hallelujah lift your hands the lord is saying he is visiting fertility issues fertility issues barrenness whatever it is lift your hands at the count of three as you shout jesus anyone connected to you or anyone here under a spell of infertility at the count of three be broken one two three break 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 right now right now right now infertility there are some ladies feeling fire fire around your stomach fire around your womb fire around your womb fire around your womb is breaking is breaking is breaking is breaking is breaking shake it bakata baba 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 is breaking hallelujah please lift your hands the lord is speaking to me there are people here everything you touch dies in your hand lift your hands please no matter what it is if it's a relationship it dies jakatarata mandereto shota at the count of three let fire fall every cause of bad luck at the count of three shout jesus one two three go 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 right now those altars those altars right now everything your hand touches dies people come around to help you and they leave you it's changing right now it's changing right now it's changing right now hallelujah sisters lift your hands any stranger that visits you in dreams lift your hands speaking to you planting things the lord is giving this instruction every spirit husband just for ladies i tell you many people will be free right now at the count of three it's like fire that will fall on you lord let it fall every entity coming to oppress these people planting barrenness bad luck one two three take it take it take it take it let them go now inside and outside let them go now let them go now let them go now let them go now my dear tap that lady for me yes that lady nodding an angel is touching you 
He's bringing a miracle for you right now. That's what I see. I see like cold sensation coming to your head. A miracle. And as it's happening to her, may it happen to you right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lift your hands and begin to pray over your request. Let it rain. Please pray. Go ahead and just prophesy and say, Lord, this marks the end of it. The Bible says, believe in the Lord your God. Pray, pray. Don't look at me. Pray. Open your mouth and pray. Shekete preskate parada balaraba. Shopra tosko to praska barata pariadabash. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we turn. Go ahead and pray. Lord, my request is turned into a testimony. I must testify by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Standing upon the eternal counsel of God, the hand of the Lord itself will bring this to pass. The burden is lifted in the name of Jesus. Are not angels ministering spirits sent forth to minister to the heirs of salvation? Let the ministry of angels begin to bring to pass every single request in this place. In the name of Jesus, we command the foundations of the earth. We command the firmaments. We command the waters to begin to align themselves towards the fulfillment of this request. We lift every body placed upon the shoulders of men by the anointing of God's spirit. And we set these ones free in the name of Jesus, mighty and everlasting God, standing upon your promise to us upon this altar. The heavenly portals opened in this place. We command a performance of the requests, the desires placed here tonight. In the name of Jesus, we decree the heavens answer speedily. Everyone trusting you for the fruit of the womb, receive in the name of Jesus. Promotion from on high, receive in the name of Jesus. An end to demonic oppression. It happens now in the name of Jesus. Blind eyes open. Deaf ears open. Destinies moved forward. In the name of Jesus. Satanic burdens removed. In the name of Jesus. We thank you Lord because speedily. According to the seasons of life. They receive a performance. In the matchless name of Jesus we decree. Amen Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please rise up on your feet. And receive the prophecy. You can. I saw a spirit. And, and I'm praying for the students now. Please listen. When I was outside ministering, I saw a spirit like bees released to produce massive failures in the exam that is being written in the name that is above all names. I pray for everyone here. The kind of performance you have never seen, receive it in the name of Jesus. Shake take up, shake rosata. The kind of performance I pray from the depth of my heart the kind of performance you have never seen receive it in the name of Jesus the grace for favor where you have labored and tried and it didn't work beginning from tonight step into a new dimension of favor step into a new dimension of favor every direction you have been praying and asking the lord to give you between now and next friday receive that direction receive that direction i want to pray for business people anyone in business lift your hands the strategy 
the strategy that you need to win in the name of jesus receive it right now may it appear to you in dreams in the name of jesus christ everything that has died in your hands i command it to come back alive in the name of jesus christ now i want to pray for you father that old baba prayed and released upon our lives the mantle of longevity 132 still alive i pray for you please receive it me too i received it from the depth of my heart lord you know that i wanted this not for self but for the house at 70 you are still standing strong at 90 you are still moving strong until you get to 120 no devil takes your life in the name of jesus hear me the force that immunes people from accidents comes upon your life right now the force that immunes people from terrorism and the wickedness it comes upon your life right now that spirit that kills people at the prime of their life when they labor and about to enter it takes their lives it leaves your life forever 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 hallelujah may you see your children's children to the fifth generation believe what i'm saying i've seen human beings bodily carrying this revelation you step into it in the name of jesus therefore anyone here that death is eyeing that you will not see the next miracle service or you will not see the end of this year i don't know how the plan is going on in the realm of the spirit but i avert it right now i avert it right now the same way you will live long physically everything that is good in your life lives long with you your health lives long with you your wisdom lives long with you faithful lives long with you two prayer points quickly where you have been rejected you step into a place i've experienced it oh let me tell you something hallelujah i will never forget you know jimmy knows the story in 2007 i remember that time i went to collect a loan from a bank remember the story i went to collect a loan from the bank we had done everything and then when it was now time for them to give me the loan they embarrassed me i was humiliated the same people who were helping me it was as if a charm came upon them and i looked at that person and i vowed that till i die till i go to be with the lord i will not collect loan from anybody living or dead i made that determination from the depth of my heart i said lord if you cannot honor me let me die like that i pray for someone here see listen if doors are closing against you is demonic don't ever say it's because i don't know so 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 bad if if the person knew me is a lie there is a man to the bible says everyone loved esther who looked at her like a garment you can wear it i pray that honor that brings receptivity receive it right now oh come on your amen is not loud enough receive it right now hallelujah the bible says you shall be as a delightsome land you know what a delightsome land is well desired in other words at any point you are seen you are invited i don't know who has disqualified you but i pray for you they may use your background they may use whatever let grace qualify you tonight let grace qualify you tonight koinonia i pray for you honor that you have never seen in your life from even people who can give birth to you begin to receive it strange honor 
in high places strange honor in high places in the name of jesus wave your hands and give god all the praise thank you jesus thank you jesus thank you jesus thank you jesus whatever you have started listen something just came in my heart whatever you have started that ended prematurely because this what i'm there is an anointing for what i'm telling you whatever you start i don't care what it is whether it is relationship or whatever and it ended but not by god we put life back to it right now i say it again whatever you started that ended but not by god by a manipulation of darkness it jacks back to life right now in the name of jesus hallelujah give god praise my goodness i wish we had time i wish we had time hello beloved in christ we hope this message was a blessing to you i would want you to do something for us if you are new here kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us to tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And then if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching. In the name of Jesus, drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season, it is still dry season spiritually, financially, and otherwise. I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain 